Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Curse of Strahd Twice Bitten, the show where five DMs take on D&D's top Gothikara campaign. As always, and eternally, I am Dragon Nicarda, your host and DM, and thank you to everyone for continuing to tune in, uh, even in spite of our uh, week off last week. Uh, but we are all back here on track and uh, excited for Death and Despair. Yay. Or at least I assume the players Yay. are, right? We... Hell yes! Thank you, Serena. I'm glad to know that at least someone is happy for their impending TPK. Welcome back, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad to be back. Beautiful. All right. So I think that's all we've got to get started. So thank you all for uh, sticking around. And without any further ado, let's get started with Curse of Strahd, Twice Bitten. Welcome back, everyone. And with that, last we left off on Curse of Strahd, Twice Bitten. Accepting a job offer from Erwin Mardikov and Danica Dorakova of Velaki's Blue Water Inn, the party began their journey to the Wizard of Wines, a local winery that had mysteriously seized delivery of its valued vintages several days past. Joined by Soldar and Evgeny, two hunters the party hired as guides, the travelers set off down the old Svalich road, hoping to find some sense of control and perhaps profit in completing this errand. Upon arrival at the winery, the party met Davian Mardikov, the suspicious and gruff owner of the Wizard of Wines, and the patriarch of an extensive family that seemingly had been exiled to the forest, away from their home and business. Davian soon explained that he and his family had been attacked, forced from their winery by a group of evil druids that dwelled in the Svalich woods. These druids, the PCs learned, had brought with them a small army of blights, twisted, corrupted, and animate plant life that sought to destroy and devour the healthy growth around them. Perhaps either driven by a sense of pity and honor, or more likely, motivated by their achingly empty coin purses, the party agreed to assist the Mardikovs in winning back their home and business. Together, the travelers ventured cautiously through the vineyard toward the old winery, only to find themselves encircled by an encroaching horde of hostile needle blights. Erthrandir's grappling hook pulled them to the safety of the roof, however, just in time, allowing escape through a second-story window of the winery itself. Once inside, the travelers slowly and carefully began their investigation, though it wasn't long before they encountered one of the invading druids. Accompanied by two grotesque abominations of vines and muddy rot. However, with the advantage of surprise and good tactics, the PCs managed to eliminate these hostile foes. It was only afterward, however, that the party was forced to face the messy and inhumane they had slain their human foe, even as several of their members were forced to face the first person they had helped to kill, even as they came to realize that, most certainly, they were not alone in the dark, isolated depths of the old winery. Coming together, the PCs agreed, grimly resolving to keep moving forward, and continued eastward through the dark, abandoned winery, only to soon come upon a narrow corridor and an echoed, crazed babbling beyond. And so, Lillison, 
as you peer through the half-open door, a creaking floorboard under your foot gives way for just a moment, and you can see the space beyond. The room through the door has a wooden floor with a ten-foot square hole cut into the center, looming over which is a wooden winch, long ropes and hooks and chains dangling through the hole into the space below. Perched atop the winch, you can see a man with wild hair, rotted teeth, and skin painted red with blood. He waves a gnarled staff made from a black branch and whipping his gaze toward you, affixing dark, dark eyes directly upon yours, Lillison's, babbles toward you. Lillison, as he raises the gnarled staff, black twisted knots and roots emanating from it, you suddenly hear a squeal of panic and fear from behind you and glancing back, uh, Amity, you immediately feel a terrified sound as wriggling within your pack. You can hear Truffle fidgeting and uttering crazed little moans and whimpers. Oh, geez. Well, I'm going to um, turn to Truffle, get him out of my pack and, and, and sort of pet his ears down. Be like, what's wrong? You can see that Truffle glances toward the open door for a second. And for a moment, you can see around the corner, the very edge of this black twisted staff branches through the window. Lillison, you can hear Truffle's squeals and the man locks eyes with you for a moment, Lillison. What do you do? Oh, goodness. Um, I'm going to send an acid splash at him. All right. Uh, I will need you to uh, roll initiative for me, please. At a girl. I would love to. Hey. Yeah. A regular roll uh, for now. We're not going to use a full combat tracker for this. Gotcha. So just. That is a 14 initiative. Uh, all right. Uh, what is your dexterity modifier? My dexterity is plus two. All right. As you watch, the man's eyes widen and he, crouching down on all fours, leans away for you from you for just a moment, giving you a split second to fire it off. Uh, this is uh, a constitution saving throw, I believe. It is dexterity. Dex. Gotcha. Uh, that is a 10. All right, that hits for four acid damage. All right. The acid damage sears forward, splashing through the air and hitting against the man's flesh and skin. Uh, it actually begins to melt away the red painted blood on his flesh, beginning to melt down, revealing a pinkish raw skin beneath. The man babbles, his arms waving, and then, crouching nimbly, leaps from the winch, grabbing hold of one of the ropes and sliding down, vanishing out of sight to the floor below. Okay. Um, seeing that, Lillison is actually going to throw the door open and um, run after him, seeing uh, what he's trying to do. All right, make a uh, perception check. That is a five perception. All right. Uh, by the time you get to the uh, edge of the hole in the floor, you could just faintly see the man dashing uh, southward, it seems, to your right. Uh, down below, you can faintly what seems to be a wagon that he sets his feet atop and then vanishing uh, underneath the floorboards out of sight, apparently uh, dashing off to the right. You can see he's kind of clutching the staff to his chest and spares you one brief, what seems like almost like a... not terrified, but exceptionally wary glance before vanishing from sight. Okay. Uh, Lillison's gonna look back over her shoulder at Erthrandir and um, not quite whisper, but, you know, quietly say, he ran off. Are we going to just let him... Is he going to... What What should we do? Well, odds are, by the time we catch him, our cover's blown. I think we just go. We find whoever's next, and we take care of him quick as we can before he's got time to mount any sort of organized response. If we're going to get out of here alive, we got to hit him before they can coordinate anything. It's rule one. All right, everybody get in here. And uh, she's going to move over towards the windows that face the portion of the winery, the uh, vineyards that we've been through and uh, take a look outside. 
All right. Uh, while Lillison's doing that, what is everyone else doing? Uh, Erythrindir's going to back into the others. I think we're rumbled. We gotta move. And kind of beckon for them to come with him. Oh, fuck me. And uh, Metroid will follow. Yeah, that's uh, about the sentiment. Sense. Amity is limping right behind Metreon. And Kiva will continue to take up the back. All right, Kiva, as soon as you uh, step closer to the door, you hear the sound of a door closing shut on the lower floor. Uh, Lillison, glancing out the window, you can faintly see through the mist milling about the dark silhouettes of uh, a dozen or so needle blights still slowly prowling the perimeter. Okay, but it's a, it doesn't look like they've been stirred up or anything like that? Uh, no, they don't appear to. Okay. Uh, her shoulders relax a little bit, and she says, At least it doesn't look like he's gone that way. Alright, that's something. Well, if we're gonna move, then should we follow his route down or try and take these stairs? Look, uh, someone's moving downstairs. Someone's moving downstairs, so whatever we do, we gotta do it quickly. All right, all right. Uh, let's take the ramp and not risk a fall. I don't have terribly much confidence in, like, our accumulated climbing skill. Everyone all right with that? Yeah, I mean, we could do that. Uh, I mean, the thing is, is if that person is now on their way to someone else, they're just going to be meeting up with more people. Yeah, which is why we gotta try and hit them as quickly as we can before they have time to, like, organize anything and so we don't open a door to be made into a pincushion. I guess what I'm saying, though, is, is if they're going and just try to, trying to congregate, maybe we'll use that as an out to try and get out of here? Uh, Lillison, are the Blight still outside? Yes, they are. Damn it. I, I think that's... Given how much trouble we had with just two, I think trying to push our way through two dozen is probably a even more losing proposition, frankly. Like, you don't get far across an open field. You will get cut down. Do these do these blights or whatever have to be controlled by someone? Like, is there one person that we can kill and then all of them will stop doing what they're doing? Uh, does Aerithrindir know that? You, uh... Given the previous check you made, um, I mean, from your knowledge, there are some cases where blights are controlled or spawned from certain massive corrupted trees. You're sure that there must be some way of allowing, perhaps, you know, mages are, you know, varied and can often have power over a number of things. Okay. You're not an arcanist expert, but many things are possible. He kind of is, actually. <laughs> That's fair. I would say um, you expect that it's probably possible. You don't know if you've seen it or heard of it. Okay, that's fair. But you, I, I guess you wouldn't know uh, that uh, specific. Given the role you rolled last time, that very frequently these blights are connected by more metaphysical than physical roots to something or someone or somewhere by which they are spawned yeah well there with summon creatures like these there's almost always a control mechanism elsewise they'll just go berserk and start eating people that the controllers don't want them to eat so if we can find out it might not be here though it could be somebody 10 miles away but it's a reasonable guess that there probably is some way of causing them to go uncontrolled, at least. Which might not save us, but would certainly help. Look, I understand that what we all just went through shook up a handful of you, and I'm sorry about that, but I think what we need to do is if we find any more people like that, we need to cut them down. It's the only way we're going to get out of here, and we have to be practical about this. It's either us or them at this point. All right. Yeah, no, we'll, I'm... We'll knock them out if we can. If we can. Okay. Okay. Kiva doesn't say anything. Is the ramp going down in front of her, that little, like, path? Yes. Looking down from your current position, you can see there's a door directly to your right. And at the very end of this corridor, there is a ramp that spirals down to the left into the darkness. All right. Do we want to investigate this door or do we want to go down the ramp? We need to make a decision now. 
ramp. That's where the people are. Let's move. let's do this. All right, Kira. Yeah, no, Kiva, my thoughts exactly. Um, <laughs> Kiva draws her scimitar and begins to um, slowly make her way down the ramp, not trying to obviously attach too much protection. Dare I say stealthily? She tries to do that. All right. If you're going stealthily, make a stealth check for me, as well as anyone else who is accompanying her. <laughs> I'll accompany her, but I'm going to step aside and let other people come in front of me. That's yep. a 24 for stealth. Very Ooh. good. All right. Earth and D will go behind. Who else is going with Kiva? Uh, I am. Wilson's going to try to uh, take up the back. Uh, 20 on stealth. 22 on stealth. Amity, Metreon, and Wilson probably have a sort of awkward stare-off about who is polite and <laughs> who is taking up the back. <laughs> That's a uh, you. 7 after on stealth you. for Wilson. But Amity can take the middle. <laughs> yeah, All right, so me. Kiva leading the way, the others following close behind. You can see yourselves entering a side turret to the structure with a sloping wooden floor that spirals down down from this top floor you can see scratch marks across the surface and Lillison, as you make your way down the ramp you are briefly reminded of the barrels that you spotted atop the wagon in the room with the loading winch and perhaps uh notice that the scratch marks may indicate that barrels are rolled up and down the ramp regularly Lillison, As you, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Lillison wants to just very briefly take a look to see how deep these scratches are. Make an investigation check for me. That is an eighteen investigation. Uh, glancing down, they seem quite deep. These have been here for a long time, and okay. deepened over time. So you continue further down making your way through down the uh, ramp until such a point as you reach a lower floor. Here is the ramp terminates, coming out into a new corridor. You can see here that it splits. To the right, you can see Kiva. You can see a corridor that appears to proceed up to the right-hand side. You can see that uh, it proceeds forward down a stone corridor, and to the immediate left, there's a pair of double doors that open into a new area. The corridor continues, however, to a single open, open door that hangs slightly ajar, and through it you can see a darkened wooden walkway that proceeds forth, and beyond that walkway, the misted vineyard of the Wizard of Wines. To your left, you can see that the ramp continues further down into darkness. And as you glance down its depths, you can faintly hear in the distance below what sounds like the faint crunching of glass. All right, there's definitely people below us. Over here is seems like a way to the actual vineyard itself, and down here there's some double doors. Um, can she perceive from where she is now the direction of where the door closing sound came from from when she was upstairs? Uh, I would say I would allow a retroactive perception check here of sorts. Oh, thank you. You're very generous. That's a 16. A 16. You think that I mean, the sound of it seemed to come from somewhere on the western side of the building. Where exactly, you're not entirely sure. So, for an idiot like me, that would be in the direction of this, um, like, bigger chamber that's going off to the left? Correct. Thank you. <laughs> All good. Um, okay. No worries. Um, so, she will relay that to the party, just explaining that there is definitely people in this area, um, and just sort of very quickly again. What do we need to do? Where are we going? Okay. If we're going to stand and fight, this is possibly the worst place. We we are vulnerable from three directions. We can just get slammed. We... Look, if... Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm going to say, I think we keep going to where the sounds of the people are. At this point, they have to know we're here. So I say, if we're going to do this fight, and we're going to end it, we might as well just get started. 
yeah, yeah but isn't, a... it, isn't it smarter than just to like draw them out or something just to like you, you we had you know all things considered pretty good luck up there uh you know what with well, the cutting them up uh all, all all in one you know but if there's more of them we already know that there's four more left yeah i don't want to get this Dog I do agree, though, that this isn't the place to do it. So I think we move into the larger chamber. At least there's more space. I would hate to be on this walkway or in the staircase when they all come running. Hold on. Wasn't there a door leading this way upstairs? Like into this big, or like into the space this room's in? The big one? Or am I misremembering? Because if there is, that's a... A uh, elevated position would be a far better place to enter from, given how many of us rely on range. Well, I mean, there was a door off to this side, uh, coming down the ramp, so possibly, yes. Lillison's going to turn around, uh, being at the end of the uh, the line, and go back up the ramp. Wait, we, we want to to take them on one by one, right? Yeah, yeah. What are you thinking, Andy? I don't know if we can... I mean, now that they know we're here, I don't know if we can drag them out one by one, but we know where one of them is. And here? The broken glass. Point. You're thinking we head to the basement and take care of them now? <sighs> Maybe. All right. Which, which one of you... Um, all of you fight ranged, except for me, then? I mean, uh, I, I, I'm more of a lover, not a fighter, but if I have to, you know, I'll, I'll use my crossbow. Of course, yes. Yeah, I'm I'm better off at range. And All right, pretty... so I know Metrion said that I'm not allowed to do this anymore, but um, look, I'm happy to go into that room and draw them out if the rest of you guys can promise me that you're going to hit them from range. It's at this point that you notice that Lillison is no longer present. I... She went back up, didn't oh she? Oh my god. They, we Lillison, we, we had doing? a whole thing about this. Lillison is trying to very, very quietly, uh, from a distance, um, Mage Hand opened that one door that they were wondering about. Kiva's going to take a step down into that, like, door area, just so she's ready to burst in in case Lillison triggers something. All right, uh, Lillison, make a... Uh... Stealth check for me. 22 stealth. <sighs> nice. <laughs> All right. You slowly push open the door in front of you with nary a creak. And peering forth into the room beyond, you can just faintly see what appears to be a wooden railing adjoining a landing just inside the door, the landing moving off to the left before vanishing out of sight. Beyond the railing, you cannot see any further evidence of the floor of the chamber. It seems to be quite tall. However, you can just faintly see uh, into the room, especially toward the back, what appear to be large wooden barrels or vats. Easily, at the very rear, you can see one 10 feet in width and just faintly peering in on the other side, you can see a similar wooden railing and landing on the opposite end of this darkened chamber. Okay. Um, Wilson's going to creep forward a little bit and see if there's anybody on this upper level. All right. Peering forward very slowly and peering through the opening you've made in the door, you can immediately sense as you peer through that the witch smell of fermenting wine fills this large two-story chamber, which you can now see is dominated by four enormous wooden casks, each one eight feet wide and twelve feet tall. A wooden staircase in the center of the room climbs to a ten-foot-high wooden balcony that clings to the south wall, which has four windows set into it at the balcony level. As you peer inside, the balcony creaks drawing your eye to a wild-looking figure hunched over the westernmost cask, pouring a flask of thick syrup into it. She wears a gown made of animal skins and a headdress with goat horns, and her hair is long and unkempt. Okay. Um... Uh, this happens, uh, Kiva. You're still peering through through the lower level? 
Yes, she is. All right. As you do so, glancing through into the room beyond, you can just faintly see suddenly something skittering across the floor. It looks like a tiny creature made of twigs, and it moves from its hiding place under the stairs and disappears behind the easternmost cask. Kiva doesn't move. She just um, looks back to anyone that is behind her and looking and sort of makes a skittering um, motion with her hand and points to the cask. They brought spiders, the motherfuckers. Lillison, as you peer inside the chamber, you can see beneath the sloping roof several thick rafters supporting the weight of the upper parts of the structure. And upon the rafters, you can see scores of ravens. Dozens and dozens of black feathered birds with dark eyes and darker beaks. A flood of black feathers covering the upper portions, almost concealing the ceiling from view, but eerily, completely silent. And as you peer inside, though, the wild figure to the west does not seem to have noticed you. A few ravens toward this side of the room turn their gaze toward you, watching you with great interest. Okay. Uh, Lilithan is going to duck out of direct line of sight of the door. Then she is going to um, point downwards and quietly cast message to Erthrandir, um, saying... There's a railing up here that goes around the upper story of the chamber. There's one person here. All right. Any way, any way up or down, or does it look like it's a separate floor entirely? Connects via a staircase down to the main floor. All right. That seems like our ticket then. Good scouting. Think we should try this way? We should leave at least one or two people on the lower floor. Just what? in case they run. You can't hear this. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. True. All right. Guess we gotta figure out figure that out. I'll talk it with the squad. Message me in thirty in about in thirty seconds and I'll have our answer. All right, Lillison's found a ga gallery up there. There's a druid up there and some other stuff. She's suggesting that we split off, have some folks on ground level to split handle off. anybody who's got it. No! Into two groups. Okay, no. point taken, but... Fine, I'll do it. Wait. What? No! It's... <laughs> if you do it, Let's I do it, draw. she does it... it... We can't just keep splitting up. There's, there's, there's more of them than there are of us. Sometimes the most advantageous thing is to pare ourselves down. I trust you guys more from a range than I trust myself. So just to be clear, you're saying that they're up there, and so we're just going to be down here attacking from a distance. That sounds uh, safe, right, Metreon? Yeah, you know what? Fine, that's fine. Uh, yeah, you know. Well, I think they're up there and down here is the thing. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't quite know. I don't really agree with this be... plan. Why don't you ask for clarification about who exactly is where, and then we'll make our decision. There's one person on the upper railing. She couldn't see anyone else. And let's just go get them. Yeah, no, that's probably more sensible. All right, let's go. Yeah. All right. You're yeah. You, you lead uh, the way. Sure thing. And yeah, he will. He'll head back up the stairs. Ramp. All right. Kiva's Kiva's going to hang back here and wait at the entrance. Uh, Metron, when he's about to go up, he sees that Kiva isn't moving, and will kind of take a step back. What are you doing? Look. <laughs> There's definitely more than one person, all right? And I'm of the belief that I want to get the fuck out of here as soon as I can. And if that means making sure that we're killing two people at the same time, then that's what we're going to do. 
Yeah, but there might be more than here down here with you. You're not gonna, you're not gonna withstand all of that. Well, then you guys can help me from up there. Or you could just come upstairs and help us. Oh my God, you guys are so insufferable. Fine. Well, excuse me for fucking wanting you to stay alive. No, I appreciate it. It's just. Uh, let's, let's go. Let's go. Ah, fine. And yeah, uh, yeah. we'll go up the ramp. Yep. Marathon Deer nods to Lillison. Upon reflection, we thought this kind of sticking together, we're stronger this way. Plus, well, I've got the grappling hook, so if we want to get down to the second level, we can just. He kind of mimes throwing a rope down. There's a staircase going down. I mean, yeah, but. He does not appear to have an actual response. <laughs> He does not appear to have her actual response to this. She just shrugs, um, moves back a bit to make room for everybody. All right. So, hmm. Count of three, everyone? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, um, yeah. All right. So as a point of clarification, Erythrindir and Lillison are on the upper level by the winch. Yeah. Uh, and Kiva, Metron, and Amity are on the lower level? No, I think we're all going up to, up to the upper gotcha. level now. Very Correct. Good. Yeah, that's what's happening. All right, very good. Just let me move everyone over. All right. All right, be before we go in... Kiva, you're going to be leading the charge, right? Or That's fine by me, unless we wanted to try to hit this person stealthily. I'm not sure what the play is here. Whatever we decide, we need to do it quickly. Right, right, right. I say we try and hit him stealthily. If that doesn't work, we let Kiva take the lead. Fine, let's do it. All right. Anybody Kiva, with... you seem kind of stealthy. You kind of seem kind of... Seem kind of uh... Stealthy, yeah. Uh, at least, at least a little bit dexterous. Well, I mean, I can try. <laughs> I mean, are you? Right. I, that's. I, I don't want to put things on you. But... I am, I am. But the person playing Kiva uh, is not going to think that her roles are going to be very high forever. So, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been blessed. I've been blessed with a few good ones. I'm waiting for the. I'm waiting for the ball to drop. But let's try it. I mean, fuck it. Yep. All right. All right. I'm, so. As you, so are you all stepping buttons? forward and attempting to stealthily approach your quarry? Well, well hang on, I hang think... on. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. So I'm, I'm, yes. I'm just asking because, in, I mean, Erfindir and I, we, our, our magic is sort of a, sometimes about give, making people stronger before we go in. Right, right, um, good point. Erfindir looks vaguely sheepish as she says this. Right, yeah, definitely. So if you're going to lead the charge, then uh, Emily puts a hand on her shoulder. Once upon I mean, a time, as you step forward, uh -oh. halfway interrupting, you feel a squirming in your arms, and you see Truffle, as you've moved forward, is now unhappily wriggling in your grasp, blinking quietly, unhappily, and almost trying to push his head back through your uh, armpit, almost as if he's trying to squirm southward, away from the direction you just stepped. That pig don't like something that's behind that door. He also could blow our cover, so maybe we'll move back can do this. All right. Not not now, Truffle. It's it's if if you want to wait back here, no, I don't I don't think I should leave you alone. Don't you'll be safe in the pack. Uh Amity's going to sort of zip him up in the pack. <laughs> um oh, no, I hope there's holes. Oh there's, there's absolutely gotta be. air holes. Come on, it's cloth. Um, yeah. And after they back up, she'll put a hand again on Hiba's shoulder and say, Once upon a time there was a heroic tiger. So heroic that when a bunch of stranger tigers that I didn't even know were kidnapped, it walked for days tracking them down. And unfortunately, it wasn't strong enough. It ended up being tied up, thrown in the same dark room with the other tigers, all bound, unable to move in the ropes. 
but unlike the others, it didn't give up. It began struggling for hours, thrashing in its ropes, and eventually the friction was enough to start a spark and set it ablaze. And as all the ropes burned and the whole building went up in smoke, the tigers were able to escape. But when the flames burned them orange and where the ropes bound them, their coat turned an ashen black. That is why tigers have stripes. Kiva, I know that you can be a tiger. And Kiva gains, let me just roll a d6. Ooh. Ooh, man. Kiva gains six temporary hit points and your speed is also increased by 10 feet for as long as you have any of them. Ooh, sweet. Nice. nice. That's wow. sick. Wow, oh my god. Spirit spark, spirit spark. And as you watch, you can actually see shifting very faintly across the surface of Kiva's skin, faint black patterns, almost like stripes that shift and solidify for a moment before dissipating. Although Kiva, as you glance down at your forearm, just across your wrist, you can see shimmering there in faint ethereal light, three bands of orange ringed with three bands of black. And as you tighten your fist, you can feel a strength welling up in your chest. Oh my goodness. Yo, I'm emotional. I missed you guys so much. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So she is going to... Um, the door is open, yes? There's no, like, opening the door yes. that needs to happen? Mm -hmm. All is, right. Uh, so she is... open. Okay. And does she still have... Is the 10 minutes passed for Bardic Inspiration at this point? Uh, I believe it was given during our last fight, so I'm not sure. Uh, I would imagine, yes, it's been 10 minutes by this point. Okay. Pa. All right. So Fair she enough. is going to, um, using her speed boost, and um, she's going to make a stealth check and try to get as close as she can to that uh, druid lady. All right. Yep. Uh, is Kiva the only one entering combat, or are all of you no. doing so? I think we're combat. all. Yeah. All, all right. I will need so. everyone to make a stealth check, please. Big money, big money. Oh, come oh on. fuck. Eight stealth. Oh my god, seven. you can roll like horrible. Like just eight worst. stealth. <laughs> so in order, that's uh, seven, eight, eight, nine, and seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> Metrion got the seventeen. Don't worry. Yeah, Metrion's He's fine. Got it. <laughs> we believe in him. All right. The second she realize if she realizes that she's not stealthy, she's just gonna run and start swinging. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you step way. inside, and as soon as you do, the balcony creaks loudly beneath your weight. A raven above you caws in distress, and as you watch, the wild figure on the opposite side snaps her gaze toward you. You can see the gown of animal skins across her form, the headdress with goat horns towering above her head, her long unkempt hair shimmering and falling across her shoulders her eyes widen toward you and a terrible grimy grin slides across her face more of the feathered filth kiva are you running forward hell yeah she's gonna take her 40 feet and just start running all right as you do the druid cackles and raises a staff come then it would have been a while since I have played with a toy like you. All right, uh, I will need everyone to roll initiative on the combat tracker. I have already uh, taken the liberty of adding most everyone. All right, that's a 10. 11. 11 for Metro as well. 14. All right. Nine. Uh, very good. All right. Kiva, you rush forward into the room, branching your uh, scimitar. And with that, unfortunately, you do not go first. Come on. It's okay. It's all right. Bring it on. Let's go. I don't want to bring it on. All right. With that, as you rush forward, uh, bearing your scimitar high, you watch 
as the druid lunges forward, bringing her quarterstaff up in the air, then twisting it and pointing the end directly toward you. Little stranger, a shame that I'll have too much fun with you before long. I hope you last longer than the last ones. And glancing on the ground around her feet, you can see several corpses of black ravens that have been, had their wings twisted, feathers torn and scattered the space around them. And as she brandishes her staff toward you, her eyes glow a deep green and she chants a word and a thunderous blast of force erupts from her staff, shattering the windows, twisting and creaking the sides around you and flinging against you. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. No! no! <laughs> Come on! That's a nat one, baby. Beautiful. All right. On that note, let's just roll this real quick. All right. Uh, you suffer a total of 11 points of thunder damage as you are blown That's back fine. 10 feet, staggering and struggling to catch yourself. She, uh, her eyes go and focus for a moment and she glares toward the cask behind you. She snarls three words in a babbling language you do not understand. And as she does, you hear the sounds of skittering, cracking and splintering twigs beginning to fill the air. And as she grins, turns toward you, grinning in a terrible grimace, be careful, nature's children are coming for you, my dear. All right. Uh, with that, that is the end of her turn. Kiva, you are up. Okay, so she is going to crack her neck on each side. She is going to rage. All right. And I need to roll a d8. Oh, boy. Oh, actually, we or should we use the pre-rolled one or not? I don't think let her use it. She's... Yeah, let her. Yeah, by all means. That's a four. Hold on. Let me look at my little chart. Ooh, I'm really excited about this one. So um, as Kiva rages and all of the black ichor starts to pour from her golden scars, a bolt of white sun-like light shoots from the center of Kiva's chest directly at the druid lady. And I need her to take, to do a constitution saving throw. All right. That is... Oh, sorry, that's a ability check, not a saving throw. That is an eight. Yes. Oh, Ooh. yes, it is indeed. All right, so she is going to take 1d6 uh, radiant right. damage, and she is blinded until the start of my next turn. Holy shit. Um, All right, roll And it. then after that... So that's six points of damage. Nice. Um, and then Kiva's going to move in and uh, swing away with her scimitar. All right, go for it. Remember, you've got advantage. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I love that for you. Uh, so that's an 11. I don't know if that hits. An 11, uh, as you swipe forward... Uh, just barely hits. Oh, I love that. That's uh, nine slashing damage for her right there. All right. Slicing her right across the skin, she snarls and steps back. Uh, okay. Is that the end of your turn? That is the end of her turn. She's going to stay right there and just get ready to do it again. All right. Very good. With that... Uh, the lot of you, but especially Lilith and Hira, the splintering and skittering increase in volume. And as you hear, Kiva, you can hear the sounds of what sound like tiny bits of splintering twigs and kindling increasing in volume and rapidly approaching. Um, and let's see. One, two, three, four. Kiva, you can see bursting up and then suddenly flooding up the stairs behind you are a sudden flood of small tw 
twig-like creatures, their bodies formed of small branches, almost looking like tall, uprooted saplings, whose frames barely reach the height of your thigh, now shoving themselves up in a line, reaching for you, tiny spindly limbs struggling through the air as the one closest to you barely swipes for you, just narrowly missing. And you, and you look down across the balcony, and you can see more and more and more pouring forth, filling the air, filling the space, and filling the room below. This All right, isn't that dead. is that is Not their particularly. Turn. With that, Lillison, you are up. Okay. Um, Lillison is going to abandon the attempt at stealth and just uh, run in through the door. As you do, you immediately see the flood of twig blights marching their way through. Okay. Um, Lillison is going to try to get into this corner and put her back against the wall on two sides, at least. Um, can I see now where they are coming from? Uh, glancing d uh, down, make a... Uh, you can see that they appear to be marching forth from the opposite side of the large easternmost vat. You cannot see anything beyond that. They might be coming from underneath the balcony. They might be coming from directly underneath you. Uh, from this vantage point, it's difficult to tell, unless you were to like try to lean over the balcony and inspect it more closely. Okay. Uh, no, that, that seems... Uh like enough information for now um how badly does the druid seem to be hurt uh from this point it's difficult to make out the full details especially because the room was a bit dimly lit and keep is blocking the way but she doesn't seem to be overly wounded from what you can tell okay um in that case lillison is going to um just turn and send acid splashes at the two closest little twig things. All right. So that's two deck saves. All right, two deck saves coming right up. Deck save one and deck save two. That is a 13 and a 12. Okay, the first one saves um, and the second one takes six acid damage. All right. You watch as the blood red splatter of asses sizzles through the air, one of them ducking nimbly aside, skittering and clutching up as it uses one of the posts of the banisters to deflect the acid. The other one lets out a word, wordless shriek as it's torn away and disintegrated, leaving nothing left but a tiny cluster of roots. Yes. All right, is that your turn? Um... Yeah, yeah, I think it is. All right, Metreon, you're up. Okay. Um, so, Metreon seeing everybody rushing into this room now. Um, does he hear anything coming up the ramp? Uh, you can make a you can use an action to make a perception check if you'd like. I'll do that. All right, go for it. Three. <laughs> uh, given the cacophony from the other room, you do not hear anything coming from that direction, no. It's pretty loud okay. right now. Okay. Um, huh. um, he's going to hold... Well, I can't hold an action, so he's going to stay put for right now, just in case something does come up. All right. Um, but, yeah, he'll do that. All right, Randy, you're up. Like, looking through, you can see Lillison <laughs> ducking in the corner... And Kiva engaged in direct combat with this uh, druid. All right. Uh, what are you doing? He's going to step into the room, and then seeing the full extent of all the little spindly creatures, he is going to panic for a moment before... Does it look like they're coming up the stairs, or can I not tell from this light? From here, you, uh, you, can, you can just barely see that they appear to be turning and marching up the stairs toward Kiva. Okay, so they don't You're appear to be just like... in time to see Lilith and disintegrate one of them with an acid splash. They don't appear to be like skittering up the walls or anything. Uh, no, they do not appear to be climbing unnaturally. Okay, good. Erythrindir is going to look between all these options, sigh, and draw his wand again. This time, his incantation is a bit more reasoned. 
by this power that I wield, let once was harm be now a shield. And right in the spot where the stairs would meet the walkway, like not in the walkway, but the tile up, he's going to cast a cloud of daggers, blocking that path entirely. All right. Nice. Beautiful. All right. And then with that done, he's going to move up to join Lillison. And I think that's as far as he can go. All right. Sounds good. Um, that being the end of your turn, Amity, you are up. All right. Amity is going to move up. And seeing that the uh, antlered creature over there is, you know, covering their eyes in pain, she will draw her crossbow, pointing it at her at the figure, but then at the last second, <laughs> like, sh shakes her head, can't bring herself to do it, and shoots one of these twig boys instead. All right, uh, which twig boy are you sh shooting for? From here, you can't really uh, see much. I would say you'd have to step into the room to get a good shot. I see, well, that's fine by me. Um, so, I guess the one that's closest to the staircase it's the natural choice. That's a 12 on attacking. All right. A 12, unfortunately, just barely misses as the thing nimbly dodges aside, casting its dark hollow gaze up toward you. Okay, that's all Amity can do on her turn. All right, very good. Um, with that, that is the end of your turn. And as you do, Kiva, Erthrandir, and Amity your eyes immediately go to the rafters above as you hear the sudden flapping of wings and a defiant caw that begins picking up as a chorus of bird of avian shrieks echoes through the ceiling as you watch what seems like a hundred ravens screaming, shrieking, and diving down toward the floor below. You see them pelting, nipping, biting at the twig blights, marching across the floor, tearing them to shreds. Uh, you watch as no less than four of the blights are torn to pieces and reduced to splinters upon the ground before the ravens re return to their uh, places flying just above the per just below the rafters and looking fiercely down at the blights below. God Two of the ravens cast glances toward Kiva and give a caw of not quite comfort, not quite defiance, but a sense of camaraderie, despite the beast it comes from, before fixing their gazes back on the blights that continue to march ahead. Uh, that is their turn. It's about time we had an ally in these fights, Jesus. All right, know, uh, right? with that, the druid stumbles back. You can see a stripe of burned flesh across her face, closing her eyes shut, her fingernails scraping against her forehead as she curses and babbles in a language that you do not understand. Stumbling back, she flings up her hand uh, before you and shouts a word. And as you watch, roots and weeds and vines begin sprouting up from the area around her, covering the ground and reaching up to ensnare around your uh, foot and ankles. Uh, I will need you to make a strength saving throw, please. Oh, come on. Oh, that's only an 11. Damn it. All right. With that... Wait, I have advantage! I have advantage because I'm raging! Oh my god! Hey! Oh. Hey! Yes! Hey. There we go. That's what All right. Go. You nimbly reach down with the scimitar, pulling and then tearing yourself free of the roots and vines as they try to grasp around you, snarling and stumbling back you watch as the druid lurches away from you bringing her quarterstaff up blindly as it blazes with a greenish light as she chants another word uh, as she attempts to stumble away from you uh, you may make an opportunity attack if you choose oh hell yes I am that's a 13 roll for a crit a 13 will hit roll damage ah roll damage. I love that that's 7 damage alright you slice across her and she stumbles back, uh, feeling her way across the walls, 
blindly stumbling and almost tripping at one point before she reaches her way to the where the door, blindly feeling for it. Uh, how long does the blind effect last? Uh, until my next turn. Uh, all right. Uh, so it is continuing on for now. Um, that is the end of her turn. And as you listen, she turns back and snarls toward you, still clawing at her eyes. The great shadow take you all. You'll pay for this. And I look forward to watching you bleed, you little shits. All right, uh, Kiva, it is your turn. Oh, she's following. She's not quite done yet. Um, so she's <laughs> nice. going to go after this woman. Um, she is going to make her attack with her scimitar. All right, uh, is the blindest gone at the start of your turn? Yes. All right, she is no longer blind, and she meets her eyes with the murderous, deadly uh, rage that is nonetheless stilled by a, a chilled look of just deep calculation and loathing. All right, so she's going to make her attack. That's a 20. Whoop, whoop. All right. So that's six slashing damage. All right. And then for her bonus action, she's going to pull this lovely lady in nice and close and send another bolt of sunlight. Nice. So I need another All right. constitution saving throw, please. That is a 12. Uh, that just, it, did she just succeed? It, my DC is a 12. What's, Fuck. Uh, yeah, that that's means a she success, succeeded. Yeah. She just Damn. narrowly ducks aside, her eyes flying wide, and she shoots you a, a dark smirk, a bit of blood beginning to drip from the corner of her lip. Hm. It'll take better than that. She's going to stay. The little Ooh, go weak light you bear is nothing to what I have seen. Uh, well, she's going to stay right on top of this woman. She's not done yet. And that's the end of All her right. turn. Very good. That is the end of your turn. Uh, it is the Blight's turns. As you watch, they turn and begin sinking their little claws into the side of the vats and begin climbing up, doing their best to slowly clamber their way to the top. Uh, given the height and some minor calculations, uh, they would be able to, two of them make their way here, um, just adjacent to Erthrandir. Oh, come on! Two of them are just behind them. And as you watch, the room continues to flood as more and more of them pour out from the southern side of the chamber, uh, filling up the space. All right. Uh, with that, that is the end of their turns. Lillison, you're up. Okay. So um, I assume that the big green square here is something else, and the Cloud of Daggers is only like the, the small green square the cloud of daggers it's a small green square, yes the yeah. big green square is the uh, druids entangle spell which is difficult terrain yeah okay um the door that the druid is standing next to can i see from here uh what kind of hinges it has uh hinges uh it's pretty far away this would require an action and a perception check i think hmm okay um in that case, Lilson is just gonna move over this way. Um, can I take a very quick peek um, down to the bottom floor and see if there's any other humanoids around? Uh, sure, just glancing down very quickly. Uh, you do not notice any other humanoids present. Okay, in that case, um, Lilson is going to focus on acid splashing the two twigs that are closest to her. All right, uh, go for it. That is two more deck saves. All right, let's see how they do. That is a six and an 18 from left to right. Okay, the uh, the six is going to take four acid damage. The other one passes. All right, the one on the left you watch is disintegrated by the acid, leaving nothing behind. Hmm. All right, is that your turn? That is my turn. All right, very good. Next up is Metreon. So not Let's hearing down the ramp, you cannot see anyone approaching. You do not hear anyone approaching, but you can now hear the sound of the raven's cause and the sound of continuing combat, the splattering of acid and the sizzling thereof from the other room. Yeah, um, silence is also scary in a way, uh, and so he's going to use. <sighs> um, he's going to go ahead and move up. 
Okay. Uh, and then seeing uh, Amity there, but then also seeing uh, Kiva engaged with the druid uh, is just instinctively going to whip his cro- hand crossbow out, and he's he's going to fire at the druid. All right. High rolls. High roll. Oh. Nope. Six. Unfortunately, a clap across the wall uh, just as she ducks out of the side, just barely uh, glancing off of her headdress before falling to the floor. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he kind of, his body seizes up a bit, and he's going to go ahead and... Uh, um, <laughs> he's going to go ahead and step out and bonus action hide. All right. And that's my turn. Very good. All right. Uh, with that, that is the end of your turn. Erthrenbeer, you're up. Well, first off, he's going to mutter unhappily, seeing these things can, in fact, climb. He's going to... But but he's going to decide that the druid that Keep is dealing with is probably the higher priority, since... And so he's going to step forward adjacent with Lillison, keeping a nervous eye on the climbing twig blights as he does. And then takes his wand in hand, draws a burning reddish-purple glyph in the air. And actually, no, no, this is this is what I have spell slots for. He is going to sing her funeral dirge as he casts dissonant whispers. I'm going to need a wisdom save, please. All right, from the druid. From the druid. All right, give me a thing in chat. Five, sure. All righty, let's see how she does. That is a 12. That just passes. She does take five psychic damage, though. All right. uh, Fortunately, that's all you needed. Oh, nice. As you watch, she doubles over, hacking, coughing. Uh, Kiva, you watch as bits of blood begin to drip from the sides of her eyes and ears. She hacks up, stumbling toward you, catching herself on your chest for a moment before retching, violently expelling reddish bile onto your chest. And in her last uh, breath, she wheezes, eyes glazing over. I might not get to play with you. But the great shadow will. I hope he has more fun than I did. And she falls, unmoving. Yeah, Kiva's just gonna sort of like kick her off of her chest and, you know, like very dismissively, <laughs> like, get the fuck off. All right, and her body goes limp and collapses on the ground. You hear a sickening crunch as her body twists unnaturally, her head facing blankly up to the rafters. Okay. That is Aerith Deer's turn, then, except for some involuntary retching. <laughs> All right. Very good. Uh, with that, that is the end of Aerith Deer's turn. Amity, you're up. All right. Um, all that's left are those uh, stick boys. Um, so Amity's going to sort of <laughs> say... Ravens, are, are you going to help us take care of those? But she is going to continue and just shoot another crossbow bolt at the closest one. All right, go for it. Fifteen to hit. That'll be seven. All right, so this piercing. one is in me- this one is in melee range of you, so you do have a disadvantage. You are uh, technically in melee range of the twenty oh, to your with lower the, left. Oh, I didn't realize the railing would do that. Okay, uh, noted. I will. I will do. I will do so. Hey, well, it's nice. still a hit, so it sets seven damage. Beautiful. And just to be clear, when you say melee range, do you mean that it's going to just like <laughs> come up and jump that railing and and s- snap me? Actually, as you like, uh, as you raise your crossbow toward it, the twig blight seems to hear this, giving a slightly crunch, splintering sound as some kind of vocalization. It turns toward you, springing toward the railing, and you bring up your crossbow and loose the bolt just in time, spearing it through the chest. Uh, halting its momentum and sending it clattering to the ground below. All right, then uh, I am going to stumble backwards to finish my turn. All right, very good. With that, uh, 
You watch as the ravens screech once more and dive down again, picking off four of the exposed uh, twig blights. It's clear for a moment, but you can hear very clearly uh, the sound of more scrambling and skittering forth from below. Okay. So to be clear, are we out of initiative? I don't think we are, are we? All right, so with that, um, next up is Kiva. What are you doing? Never mind. All right, Kiva is going to... She's going to move right there, and she is going to just uh, bonus action try to hit this uh, druid closest, or the twig bite closest to her with her little light blast. Okay, so which twig blade are you aiming for? There aren't any currently exposed. Oh, okay. Um, never mind. I thought she could see that one uh, down on the second cask there. Uh, no, the exposed ones are all now deceased. Oh, well then, um, I guess she's going to go back to where she was and ready an action if one comes up near her. All right, very good. Uh, with that, that is the end of your turn. And as you watch, Kiva, you can see beginning to clamber up the sides of the vats on the southern side now. And Lilith and Erthrandir, you can see this as well, beginning to climb their way up and fitting themselves to the dark crevices and spots as more of them begin climbing their way up the exterior on the northern side. Many more twig blights emerging into the space. S climbing slowly, it seems. They weren't able to... They're not able to make the top immediately, but they lash out toward you. Uh, but... Two of them uh, turning toward Lois and Erthrandir, raising twig-like claws high, um, preparing themselves to attack. That is the end of their turn. All right, uh, Lolison, you're up. Okay. Um, can we tell by now exactly which one they're coming from? Uh, by now, um, Erythrandir, as you glance down, and Lolison, you can see that they appear to be flooding out from the from what seems to be an opening, perhaps in the rightmost cask at the very bottom. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Um... Unfortunately, Acid Splash does specify that it has to be at a creature, not an object. Sadly. So, yeah. So, uh, I'm just gonna fire the Acid Splash at... Um, let's do it the two furthest away from me. All right. Or is this so, the ones on the top right? Uh, the top right and the bottom right. All right, very good. Uh, that'll be two dexterity saves. That is a five and an 18. Okay, the one that rolled a five takes one acid damage. All right, uh, it does not seem overly bothered, though half of its arms is now sloughed away by uh, uh, this reddish sizzling acid. Okay, um, and then Lilithson's also just going to turn to Erythrandir and say, uh, should we just cleave open that one? <sighs> I, I suppose it might on it might give us more to deal with, but I don't have any tools that'd do the job. I don't know. When uh, when Matrion shows his head again, yeah, I don't know. We we can bash him straight into it or something. Yeah, honestly, at this point, we might consider a retreat. You know, snipe at him from the door. Or we could might be go... more sensible than yes. Or we could go down. Point. Uh, shoot. 
Hmm. Th this way they can only hit us one at a time with the narrowness of the railings. Down there we might just get surrounded. Ugh, I don't like this. But I wouldn't give for an evoker right now. Alright. Okay, I, I don't know. I think for now we try and do what we can, back up Kiva, and enjoy the fact that they can't just skitter up the stairs to murder us. Very well. And, um, would it be possible to, situated where she is right now, would it be possible for Lillison to take the hide action? Um, given that she seems to be in clear view of the Blights, I would say no. Okay. There's not really anywhere to hide behind. All right. Um, in that case, she is going to disengage and move back to the corner. All right. Very good. Metreon, you're up. Okie dokie. Um... Shoot. Um, so when Metreon popped in, did he see the twig blights coming up? Oh, yes. You can see many twig blights climbing up, uh, flooding the space. There are many of them. Okay. Uh, he's going to take a couple steps back. And then if I go up one one space, will I still have, be able to shoot something uh, through that, or do I have to stay within this space to shoot through the door? Uh, I mean, it's whatever you can see. Okay. So uh, I still can see uh, twig blights. So I'm going to shoot this one, uh, the furthest one uh, far left right here. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and bonus action hide first, and then uh, shoot. Fuck him up. All right. Make a stealth check for me for your hide. Uh, and you're shooting the one uh, that has no cover against you, right? So Correct. You can see fully. Yeah. All right. Very good. Uh, and that's going to be 18 stealth. That they don't seem to have noticed you. Uh, make the attack with the advantage, I suppose. Uh, 15. Uh, or not with 30. advantage. Yes. 15. That's fine. So 15. That was the first roll anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so six points of piercing damage plus sneak attack. All right. You tear right through it, shattering it into splinters. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, eight total. Sneak attack was beautiful. That took blade is gone. Awesome. Uh, and yeah, he uh, he's going to stay out here for right now. All right. Very good. Uh, that is the end of your turn. Arthur, dear, you're up. Hey, Kiva, come back with us. Make sure you don't get pin down alone. That's the last thing we need. If you can. Alright. Are the Blights in su situated in such a way they could make opportunity attacks for me running along the walkway? Um, yes. I mean, some of them are now, you can see, they're actually clambering and clinking onto the outside of the railing, and they could lash out at you as you run by. Ah, damn it. That's unfortunate. Okay. All right. Given the railing, I would say you do have half cover, though, so they would take a minus two penalty. All righty. Hmm. In that case... Hmm. Yeah, Aerithrandir is going to disengage to help clear the path, and or disengage to help clear the path and kind of make his way up to these stairs. All right. Disengaging and making your way out? Yep. That's All right, turn. Amity, you're up. You can see more and more of these twig blights flooding up, clawing their way up. The ravens doing their best to take them down, but slowly losing against the tide. What are you doing? Yeah, she's going to use our snipe strategy of just backing up and readying an action to... Presumably she can't see any from here over the railing to just shoot any of the get into view. Hmm. All right, so right, yeah, right now you can't really see anything. Are you just hanging out and readying an action or something? Yeah, and, you know, watching uh, the ravens take care of it. All right, beautiful. Uh, with that, I believe that is the end of your turn, which means it's the ravens go. They will swoop down and tear away uh, four new twig lights, splintering them to pieces as others rush in to flood and take their place. Kiva, you're up. You can see three twig blights left by the ravens 
uh, now scrambling and leaping toward Erthrandir and Lilithin. What do you do? Okay, so if she uses her range to get here, can she hit one of them with her little lightning bolt thing, or do they have cover? Uh, I mean, they're not entirely obstructed. So, okay, but they have so, a little bit um, of cover. They could probably have, you know, half cover with, with using the railing. Okay, so she's going to go for the one that's um, right next to Erythrindir with her bonus action and try to hit that with the uh, Iron Man blast. Yeah, That is a dexterity save, I believe. Uh, yes. Con. Wasn't it Con? Con. Con. Oh, Con, yeah. yes, thank you. So, no, yeah, no cover. That is a three. <laughs> yes! Oh, okay. What's the damage? Uh, three radiant damage, yeah? And they're blinded. I don't know if that affects blights, but yeah. Well, uh, this is the one that Lillison, uh, poked with an acid splash earlier, so it only has three hit points now. So, oh, you yay. slice it across with the radiant energy burning a long, jagged gouge through its chest before it slides in half and crunches to the ground. Oh, you love to see it. <laughs> And this one that's right in front of her, is that, like, out of her range if she were to swing with her scimitar? You can swing, it'll have half cover. That's fine. Yeah, she's gonna fucking try it. She's raging. <laughs> Go for yep. it. Gotta keep that up. Oh, come on, Foundry. Don't do this. That's only a seven. I don't think that hits. A seven does not hit. Your scimitar slices through there, and then as it ducks aside, it gets caught in the railing. You have to tug it free for a second, dislodging the metal from the wood, yanking it away with a splintered bit of wood going flying free and then clattering to the ground. All right, that is her turn then. All right, with that, it is the Twig Blight's turns. You watch as one of them leaps across the way looking up toward Lillison and extending its long, slender, uh, twig-like claws toward you as the other one turns toward Kiva. Each of them will attack with their claws, uh, first against Kiva. That'll be a five, which I believe misses. That does miss, thankfully. Then an 18 against Lillison. That oh. hits. I'm not going to burn my second shield on this. All right. It slices across the bottom of your knees, dealing two points of piercing damage as you just nimbly managed to duck back, evading the worst of the blow. You watch okay. as several others begin to creep and claw their way up, rising up from the space below. So. With that, you can see one emerging beside Erthrandir, one emerging beside Lilithin, and another, and another several emerging adjacent to Kiva. Turning toward you, they extend their claws and begin slicing through the air. Um, one of them will attack Lilithin, one of them will attack Erythrindir. Alright. That's an 18 against Lilithin. That also hits. Alright, another 2 piercing damage. And then a 5 against Erythrindir. No. Then uh, there's going to be another one against Kiva. This is going to be a 14 to hit against Kiva. This is... All right, beautiful. You duck back, blocking the blow and splintering a few of its claws with a slice of your scimitar. Uh, that is the end of the Twig Blight's turns. Uh, Lillison, you are now cornered by a pair of Twig Blights. Uh, what is your turn? Um, My turn is gonna be... Hmm... I'm going to send acid splashes at the two closest to me. All right. Actually, no. Um, I'm going to send acid splashes to the one to the left of Erythrindir and the one below that one. All right. Go for it. So, two deck saves. Uh, that is an eight and an 18, top to bottom. Okay, the top one takes two acid damage, um, the bottom one escapes, and then uh, Lillison is going to disengage and get out of there. Oh, that's All a right. beautiful thing. Lillison slips away. Uh, which direction are you going? Past Earth and Beer. Okay. Yeah. And vanishes into the room. Metron, you see Lillison uh, 
smoothly move through the space beside you and then duck back away from the room. All right, uh, Metreon just kind of watches Lilithson run out. I imagine she's uh, somewhat bloodied. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, he will kind of skip in front just to kind of get a, a sense of thing. And uh, right. seeing how uh, overrun it seems to be with blights, he's going to go step, head and step back. Uh, bonus action hide. And then he's going to go ahead and attack the one that uh, is to the... Uh, Kiva, have you hit the one that's in front of you? Uh, no. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and uh, attack that one. Good idea. All right. This is the one... Uh, that's Kiva's... blocking Kiva on the walkway. Gotcha. All right, very good. Uh, given the perspective on it. Yeah, that should be fine. Uh, yeah, you're good to hit it. Ooh. Oh, uh, weird. Okay, I don't know what that means. Um, it just rolled. I guess it's advantage. a twenty-three to hit. Oh, okay. uh, twenty-three uh -oh. will certainly hit. Cool. You give oh, me some damage. That's cool. Plus that sneak sneak attack. So that's eight points of piercing damage plus two, so ten total. Oh, All right, that's Kiva, you see the blight obstructing your path. A turn toward you, waving its uh, slender claws through the air and then explodes in a shower of splinters. And as you look up, glancing, you can just faintly see uh, Metron nodding grimly from the open doorway before withdrawing and reloading. Yeah, he immediately slams she... up against the back of the wall. <laughs> I was going to say, she would throw him a wink if he was looking. All right. And that's my uh, turn. Very good. That is the end of your go, which means, Erthrandir, you are up. Okay. Seeing that it looks like things are about to... We are about to be all through this door. He is going to join the gang and disengage. Yoink. Seeing the others, he's going to murmur. All right, once Kiva's in here, we slam the door shut and let the ravens do the work, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great, great. And he's going to come down the ramp to block that off. And yeah, that'll be his turn. All right. Or er, actually, or er, now nah, it's his turn. All right. Uh, Amity, you're up. I mean, you know, ready to action to shoot any twiggies that come into the way, but it seems like our plan is to be to safe retreat, so. You could still pop out and shoot one of them before making a safe retreat. In yeah. fact, I cannot because my speed is 15 feet. Oh, that's right. God damn it. Uh, God damn it. All right. Uh, so is that Amity's turn then? Would you like to take the dodge action? Yeah. Uh, I prefer the ready to action to shoot one that's coming. Very good. All right, with that, uh, Kiva, you watch as the swarms of ravens dive down again, snapping and biting. You hear the splintering and crunching of twigs and branches as four more of the twig bites are cut down, leaving only two stragglers lurching their way toward you. Glancing down over the uh, side of the balcony for a moment, you can faintly see that there appears to be no additional blights flooding forth from the vat. The flood, it seems, has stemmed. Well, Kiva's not going to leave a fight unfinished here, so <laughs> she is going to... Uh, if she goes around to this area, can does there cover on these guys as well, or would she have to um, go down the steps to get them? Um, so you can hit them from there. Uh, they will have half cover. All right, well, first she's going to try to do that lightning bolt thing uh, as a bonus action. Roast so, uh, con saving throw. Very good. Let's see how it does. That is a 20, I'm afraid. Oof, okay, that's okay. So she's going to try to hit anyway, um, since there's only two left. Why not? Go for it. Ah, oh, damn it. All right, that's only a nine. <laughs> All good. It ducks back and you slice through empty air pulling the scimitar back uh is that the end of your turn uh see normally i would do the smart thing and say that she would just follow but there's only two left and she wants to make sure that the ravens can actually handle this so yeah she's gonna stay there hey play your character all right with that the twig blades have their turn one of them leaps through kind of grasping onto the railing with its little claws and pulling itself through, slowly emerging into the other side. It whips its way around, swirling like uh, a dervish of sharpened twigs and brambles, and 
latches itself out, a tiny little body swirling as it claws against your side, soon followed by its compatriot that leaps forth on the other side and rounds the railing, the two of them cornering you on either end. Uh, that's going to be a six to hit, which I believe misses, and a seven. <laughs> also, which I believe also Both of misses. those yes. miss. Yeah. All right. It's pulling up on some dexterity or quickness or strength that you didn't know you had. You whirl around, uh, deflecting each claw and blow with your scimitar, almost dancing as the blights on either side wail at you ineffectually. All right. Uh, with that elegant defense, uh, Lillison, you are up. You can hear Kiva still fighting on the other side. Okay. Um, Lillison is actually going to take a look at everybody. Um, does everybody around her right now look um, pretty healthy still? Uh, yeah. Yes. Everyone around you looks pretty much unblemished. Okay. Um staggering a little bit and uh, clapping her hand to one of the uh, the deeper scratches in her side she is going to uh, just look around and say I'll be right back and uh, stagger towards the ramp where, where are you going? As you do for just an instant moment the you see a tiny dark figure on the other side, the blight, and it's going to lash out toward you. Oh come uh, on! Take an attack of opportunity with three quarters cover. Uh, that's a that's a one that misses. It's okay. It's across the door frame. Okay. Um, Lillison like barely even flinches at that point. She's she's just staggering, um, and she's actually gonna double move uh, down the ramp. All right. So I've already good. moved thirty. You make your way down to the first floor. And peek in through this door. All right. Peering in, it's quiet down here. You can see splinters and bits of shattered wood where the blights have been torn to pieces by the swarms. There's no evidence of anything else down here that you can immediately see. Okay. Um... Can I say that that was my move and my bonus action dash and uh, take an action to do a, a good perception around. I'll allow it. All right, that's a 12 perception. 12. All right, peering in, you can't hear much other than the uh, the creaking of wood beneath Kiva's footsteps, uh, the slicing of her blade through the air, and the continued uh, splintering of the twig blights as they move and their bodies crack and creak. Okay. Um, Lillison's just going to wait here. That's my turn. All right, very good. Next up is Metron. You can, from what you can hear, Kiva is still caught in the fray. Uh, you just faintly have a line of sight to one of the blights blocking her path. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bonus action hide. Uh, that's a 10. Um, All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and shoot at, shoot at All it. All right, you have advantage because its passive perception is nine. Oh, uh, well, it does have half cover against this because uh, the door frame is partly in the way here. Or no, this would be three quarters cover, actually. Uh, so 15? Uh, 15 plus three quarters cover is unfortunately a 10, which does not hit. What? Oof. Damn it. All right. Yeah. Uh, and then. It's a pretty uh, narrow doorways, I'm afraid. Yeah, no, yep. that makes sense. Uh, and then seeing Lillison just kind of like wander off down towards the ramp, uh, thinking that that's now the plan, he's going to go ahead and use his movement to go uh, catch up with her. All right, very good. Uh, it's already used his opportunity attack, so it can't do it again. Uh, and you're making your way all the way down with a bonus action dash, or no, you already hit some. Uh, yeah, I can only use my movement. Gotcha. All right, Erythrindir, you're up. All right. Eva sounds like he's still in trouble. Metron and Lillison are beating a path down the ramp. What are you yep. doing? He's going to sue an Amity. Try and he's going to give a look to Amity. Let's or nah, nah, not right now. He's going to step out onto the balcony. Seeing that seeing all this and is going to draw his newly bought short sword for the first time and bring it down in an unpracticed but pretty dexterous cleave against the one in front of Kiva. That a boy. All right. right. Dimly in the unlit room. Uh, yep. Go for an attack. 
Going for it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's a nine. Unfortunately, you're not quite used to it just yet. You overbalance for a moment, stepping a bit too far into the swing, and it embeds itself on the railing. Stupid. You have to like tug it forth for a moment before pulling it free. The twig blade rotating its head toward you. These tiny Stupid. chittering and crackling sounds coming as its little mouth works its way around. Stupid weapons built for human frames. And uh, how badly hurt does Kiva look? Uh, how badly is she looking? Uh, she's about halfway to passing out. <laughs> uh, all right, he will hold off for now, and that's his turn. All right, very good. Amity, you're up. Let's what? She goes up behind Erythrindir. I was under the impression there were hardly any left. There's two. I just wanted to help Kiva. Speaking of which, there's one right in front of me, but, you know, follow your heart. I think the ravens oh. are going to take care of them anyway. No, I'm... I'm I'm helping. Uh, she's going to back up so she, she can see it, and then cast v -v 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 Vicious Mockery. Wow, bo -bo 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 -bo. All right. <laughs> Saying, um, you will always be inferior to the very railing that you're standing next to. Ooh. Sick burn, yo. Fire damage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is a 12. What's the DC? 13. 13. Nice. All right, you watch as... Uh, Aetherindir, its gaze fixes toward you for a moment, and then it stiffens, and then goes limp, as if some kind of connection, whatever animating spirit was infused within it, has been severed, and it collapses to the ground like a puppet. You know, normally I don't approve of weaponized insults, but that was amazing. <laughs> I, I didn't expect that to be enough. I mean, sticks and stones can break bones and all. Yeah, but your word but words can hurt, apparently, if they're directed well enough. <laughs> I suppose so. Um So is is that all of them? There's one more, but I think Kiva's gonna cleave it if the ravens don't. I think we're Kiva, safe to you, join them. Uh, Kiva, as you turn with your cemetery, you hear a fierce cry from above, and all of and half the ravens, dozens and dozens of them, settle down on the final twig blade, crashing and tearing and biting. There's a flood a black feather that obscures any indication of the space below. There's a faint, shriveled scream. And then when the ravens turn away, carrying bits of twigs and brambles on their beaks, there's nothing left. Not even a splinter. All right, thank you. That's very helpful. The room goes quiet as the ravens resume their perches gazing down at you from their place on the rafters above. So Kiva is, can't speak Raven, obviously, but she is going to ask, uh, just sort of in general, how many more are there? Are we safe to leave or is there more coming? I, I, I don't know. I think we got all of the ones in this room, but not in the whole place. What is Lillison doing? Lillison? Lillison is, uh, you know, listening very keenly to whatever is going on upstairs. Um, and then <laughs> cautiously stepping forth into this room. Taking a look at the carnage from below. All right. Glancing into the room around you. Now quiet in sound of combat, despite the creaking up above and the sound of Kiva and Erythrindir's muffled voices. You can faintly see beneath the balcony above you several stacked old barrels. You can see that each of them has the insignia, the Wizard of Wines, burned into its side in a dark charred black. You can see in the dark alcove beneath the balcony, halfway down the room, a closed door. And to the right-hand side, Peering past the vats to the north, you can see a number of other doors leading forth from this chamber. Lillison is going to think for a moment and then, uh, slumping against one of the doors, uh, point upwards and cast a message to Erythrindir. How long will your daggers last? 
Uh, from now, another 30 seconds, give or take. But I can also drop them at any time. Should I start opening doors? Uh, if you're gonna... Hold on. Is it alright if I heal you? Yes. Alright. Grit your teeth. Is Arthur Deer heading down? Uh, yeah. He's gonna join the gang on the bottom. Alright, so with that, you watch as the cloud of daggers... Actually, he's out. probably just gonna head down the stairs. He's right probably... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, are we still in think with that is We are not. Okay. You are out I think with that, so, yeah, the daggers fade. The too. Same. Alright. Um, is the body of the druid, or whatever is left of her, still in the room? Uh, yes. It is lying slumped at a twisted at an unnatural deadly, dead angle. Um, uh, okay. At the eastern side of the room, or the western side of the room, just beside a door that's hanging halfway ajar. Yeah, uh, Kiva's really curious about what she had on her, uh, so she's going to go over and, and uh, look and see what's on the body. All right. Uh, while Kiva's doing that, give me an investigation check. Uh, what is everyone else doing? Panicking. <laughs> Amity is going to unzip her pack and try to get a better sense of why Truffle was panicking? Was he trying to warn us about the druids, or...? Um, glancing over Truffle, as you, with each step you take down the staircase, Truffle begins squirming in your arms once again, squealing faintly and, or not in your arms, but in your pack, squealing faintly. And by the end of it, as you pass by the, uh, door, uh, to the northern uh, right-hand side of the room. You hear him winking in panic and struggling, looking visibly distressed. Oh yeah, then Amity's gonna retrace uh, her steps in order to uh, try to make him a little less distressed. Um, and is, is it possible to get sort of an idea of what is distressing him, or would that require a speak with animals zone? Um... It's difficult to tell. Uh, make an intelligence check for me. All right. Eleven. Unsure. But it's strange. You've, you've not seen him this uh, clearly distressed uh, before. Not from something you can't see. All right. Then we'll retrace our steps going back around the, the ramp instead. He's trying All to right. sort of As you avoid the room, stress Truffle zones. visibly relaxes. <laughs> he visibly relaxes and stills in the pack on your back. I'm commenting to Metreon and Wilson right there. So Truffle seems to really not like something close by. Can't you just like uh, talk to him, ask him what, what what's what? If if you think that we can spare ten minutes, then I could talk to him and and even the um the birds who were helping us here. Couldn't you just if, if you think a, we can spare ten minutes? Couldn't you just use a bit of actual magic? You know, if we're trying that's, to get this done quickly. That's that's true. I'll just I'll just do that. Yep. Yeah, and so you know what? Not even ritual casting. I'm gonna expend an entire spell slot here <laughs> to cast speak with animals. All right, you cast speak with animals. Uh, you can now speak with animals. Oh boy, it's the return of the truffle voice. Yes. 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 <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Amity unzips that pack and what what's wrong, Truffle? Is was something bothering you there? I I gotta see if I can remember what the voice was. Um all right. <laughs> um, it's very useful in pleading. Truffle who was uh snuffling very faintly. I it just felt so cold. It felt like, like I was hurting everywhere. I, it was, it was, the red thing, the red monster. I, I can feel it. It's, it's so, it was so close. I didn't want to be near it. It, it made me hurt. Oh, oh dear. She's gonna relay this to the the rest of the party. Um, he said there's there's some kind of red monster. S something cold that, that, that hurts him just from being there. This red, might be a, a 
ghost thing. Wait. That guy that Lillison splashed, wasn't he covered in blood? He was. Can you ask him whether he means something that we've already killed or something that's still somewhere here? Do you mean the... Truffle, do you mean the man... Uh, or I don't remember whether it's a female or male. Uh, but do you mean the one with those antlers who we took out? It, 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 it was it was something I... Uh, he, it, it's still out there. I, I felt it when when we came down before when I didn't I didn't want to go near it I could feel it. It, it was so close. It made and I'm sorry All you right. just we don't have to go close to it again, right? I, I we you, I'm not you don't have to go close to it if you don't want to. This is she's she which tells uh, the other rest of the party what Truffle's saying is, I hope it's not some kind of angry blood spirit or something. That would be just our luck, but I don't know. But regardless, we should take care of it and probably. Or worse, it's an angry wine spirit. <laughs> then you can just not say that. But... You could just drink it. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's angry, I, I don't want to, but yeah, no, that would speaking, be a rat, quite a stomach ache. Speaking of um, angry and wine, uh, I should probably mention that I saw that person up there pouring something into the leftmost vat, so uh, perhaps don't drink straight from these yet. Oh, those bastards. Well, you, Kiva, you were inspecting the druid's corpse, correct? Uh, apparently not very well with a nine. <laughs> well, you do manage to find, um, you know, given the length of time this conversation has taken, you're just now finishing up, uh, given the lowness of that role. Um, you can see that around her neck, she appears to have worn necklaces of uh, small white objects. And as you reach closer and kind of remove her matted hair from covering them, they're very clearly necklaces just covered, edge to edge, lined with teeth human teeth, incisors and molars, all woven together in a sickening, terrible pattern. Tucked into one of the pockets in the side of her animal skin gown, you can see corked, but with a bit of liquid around the side, uh, what seems to be a flask formed of uh, thick leather, and there's a sickly sweet smell that emanates from it. Uh, she is going to take the necklaces, take the flask, and does she have the staff and the, like, goat head thing still on her? She has a uh, simple uh, wooden staff, functional as a quarter staff, uh, and she is wearing a, uh, a headdress with goat horns coming off of the top. Yeah, she's going to take both of those things, too. The headdress she's going to put in her bag with the creepy teeth necklace and the flask, and she's going to carry the quarterstaff sort of tucked in the backpack straps um, because you never know when you might need another weapon. All right, and Reasonable. actually, as you can see, the quarterstaff itself is seems to be of chiseled from wood in a strange pattern. The, the uh, branches and twigs coming off of it seeming to have been curled and twisted in a strange uh, pattern that swirls around the sides, and at the very top, you can faintly see a... Uh, a dull green mineral uh, encircled uh, in a crown of twigs and brambles that place it there. You remember seeing this uh, mineral glow when she was casting spells, and you imagine this quarterstaff probably doubles as some sort of arcane implement. Oh, that might be fun to keep around. Yeah, she's going to take everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, very good. All right. Uh, Tr Truffle, will you help us find the the big bad monster, or does it hurt too much? It it doesn't. I mean, it it feels like it's supposed to hurt. Like like, oh, I don't know. It 
I don't think I'm, it's actually hurt. It, it, it goes away when I'm not there, but I know that when we were, when you were by that, 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 that wooden thing, it, it hurt real bad. All right. Um, so she's going to put Truffle down and sort of in investigate. Do you mean, um, do you mean this one? She says, pointing to, uh, I guess the one that doesn't have a giant crack in it. He uh, shakes his head and shivers uh, as he glances toward the door to your immediate north. I, I can feel it now. It feels like cold things biting into me. From through here. He nods silently. Amity looks at her companions. I'm I'm down. Just give me a moment. And he is going to trace a regrettably what is not going to be a glowing green glyph for very long and cast healing word on Lillison. And while he's doing that, Metron's going to go ahead and just very carefully sneak up to the door uh, that's on the other side and just kind of put his ear to it and see if he hears anything. Oof. Heal for three. Right, make, make a perception check for me, uh, Metron. Fuck, seven. Tough to hear. Um, although as you're pressing your ear up against the door, you do hear the faint sound of what sounds like wood knocking against wood for a moment before it silences again. There's something behind here. Uh, I can't tell what it is, though. There's something moving the wood, though. All right. Are y'all ready? No. Well, okay, well, fair. Lillison well, grimaces as the, uh, I assume the healing word is still painful. Um, as it goes through her and then uh then she smiles at erthrandir and then looks over at amity could you uh also thank the ravens for us of course uh, amity looks up at the ravens amongst the rafters and says uh, thank you very much ravens for for helping with those awful bundles of sticks you you might have saved our lives there one of the ravens, uh, a bit larger than the others, fixes its gaze upon you. Um, you hear a number of excited little chitters and squawks coming from She talks? She can talk? It can talk? <laughs> and then one of them guts down at you. Not a problem! Hate them! <laughs> Didn't taste good! <laughs> <laughs> We, we think there might be something bad through this door, or even if there's not, there's definitely other bad things around. It would be awful nice if you could help with those too. I mean, and, and don't put yourselves in big danger or anything. Make a persuasion check. Okay. Come on. Uh, I would say with advantage, actually. Come on. Nice. That's in two double 19s. That doubles means you roll again. All right. Uh, the raven, the larger raven fixes you with its eyes. Can't do much against big things, but maybe bring more little things. Or more of those disgusting plants. Maybe we can help. Great. I'm, I, there's probably a bunch more plants like that. Uh, if our sources are to be believed. <clears throat> well, let's see if there's any through the door. She says, not actually, like, opening the door or anything. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Metro just kind of hanging back right now. All right. All right. Uh, Lillison conjures up her mage hand and looks at everybody. I'm ready right. if y'all are. And as you do, uh, Amity, the rave you... Hear a calling again, and as you look up, the big raven is fixing you with an odd gaze. And it squawks quietly. Are you friends of the old man? Do you mean, uh, do you actually, did we get his name um, earlier? I, I think we did, yeah. Eventually. After he called us a bunch of names. 
Do you mean um, Davian Martikov, the, the guy who was standing outside in the grove of trees out there? The I... raven caws and spreads its wings. Uh, seemingly, it doesn't reply, but it seems pleased with your answer. Flutters up to a higher rafter and begins calling softly at the ravens around it. Whatever you said, it seems to have been pleased with what you provided. Hmm. Well, I don't know if he's he's very he. I don't know if he's very friendly, but we're certainly helping him. Are, are you friends with him? The raven glances back down at you, seemingly uh, almost seemingly surprised that you're continuing the conversation. But he's not saying Trust anything. the old man. Oh. Trust him. <laughs> All right. I, I'll trust him. And Emily will relay that we should trust the old man to the companions. Huh. Now. Well, things to discuss later. For now, let's deal with this red spirit thing person. Y'all ready? Keep asking that, and the answer is always going to be the same. Okay. Will you? Ah, to hell with it. Open the door, Lillison. <laughs> Lillison kind of nods in a, you know, I was expecting this sort of way, and opens the door. All right. Stealthily. And... All right. Make a uh, stealth check for me. 18 stealth. All right. The door slowly creaks open, allowing faint slivers of grayish silver light filtering through from the upstairs windows to creep into the room beyond. You can just faintly see large dark shapes covering the ground and above them a silhouette. And that's where we're going to take our break. Oh. Ooh. Y'all are too spooky for me. <laughs> Shouldn't have played Curse of Strahd with a bunch of Curse of Strahd DMs. <laughs> yeah, I know, we right? Just, very. We should have gone with like <laughs> something lighthearted. Yeah. Five Curse of Strahd DMs play Princes of the Apocalypse. It'd be great. <laughs> Tell you what, one of your characters dies, you get to be bring back uh, three kobolds in a trench coat instead. That'll be Yay! <laughs> what we're doing. There we are. Perfect. All right, so uh, we will pick this back up after a quick 15-minute break. Uh, until then, we do have a few other messages from our D&D community, including part one, not the whole thing, but part one of a new fireside chat with r slash Curse of Strahd's very own Mandy Mod, who you might know as the author of the Fleshing Out Curse of Strahd series. She sat down for a two-part interview with our producer, Shiplukas, about how she handles and prepares for player character deaths while running this campaign so we hope you enjoy uh and we will see you back here soon Side Chat, a short interlude with weekly features where I, your host Japlukas, will be showcasing and interviewing prominent D&D creators. This week we are talking to Mandy Mod, the creator of Fleshing Out Curse of Strahd series, about handling player character death. What are the risks and benefits of running a low risk versus a deadly campaign? Running a low-risk game can give players a sense of superiority. On one hand, that can be really good. Players will feel like heroes, they'll feel mighty and powerful and like they can do anything. Players that are brave and courageous are more likely to go want to help that NPC or take whatever plot hook that you place in front of them. 
It can be pretty fun to feel powerful, but if you let the players feel too powerful, there are two main issues that you'll likely run into. On one hand, the players may actually start to get bored. Subconsciously, they'll start to feel like they've actually lost their agency. If there's no chance of failure, then what's the point of trying? There's no encounter they can't win, and even if they make a million mistakes and roll horribly the whole time, they'll always come out on top. They may actually start to lose interest in the game as a whole. Additionally, players that feel too powerful run the risk of turning into murder hobos, essentially kind of hijacking the game from you. They feel like they can get away with anything, because in a really low-risk game, they absolutely can. And when the DM loses control and loses their own agency, then the game kind of starts to fall apart at that point. Deadly campaigns, however, can stop a murder hobo in their tracks. Losing a character is one of the worst things that can happen to a player, and more often than not, players will choose self-preservation over all else, even if it's not what their character would do. If the players know that every encounter or fight runs the risk of death, they'll be more careful in their interactions and proactive when scouting out threats. They'll be cautious and considerate and generally treat the campaign with a lot more respect. But that's not to say that deadly campaigns don't also have their downsides. Sure, we are talking about a constant rollout of new PCs just coming and going, but that's not really the problem. In fact, if you open up your campaign by saying that it's a very deadly game, losing PCs and creating new character sheets all the time might be expected, and your players might be completely fine with that. The real problem comes from the emotional effect that a deadly campaign can have on the players. And I'm not talking about the fact that watching your character die is painful, because yes, it is, sure, but again, your players might be expecting that from a deadly campaign. I'm talking about sheer defeatism. It's this idea that no matter how hard you try, or how careful you are, that you simply cannot win. It's exhausting and hurtful, and it can easily transcend the game and start to affect players in real life. That sense of defeatism might also birth a sort of antagonism toward the DM. People in general, human beings, if we feel defeated or beaten down, our natural human reaction is to find a villain. And DMs, unfortunately, make for very easy villains. It's easy for players to forget that the DM is a player just like them, or a human being even, and start to vilify them as a bully that's trying to get them down all the time. And once there starts to be active antagonism between the people at the table, whether it's DM players or players versus players, it won't take long for your D&D game to fall apart. So, while a very low-risk campaign can give your players confidence, it also might lead to boredom. And a highly deadly campaign might be quite challenging and earn respect from your players. It might also beat them down and cause infighting. I believe that a healthy balance between the two sides is needed for a good campaign. Or at the very least, a clear understanding between the DM and the players regarding the difficulty level. Why is player character death taken so negatively in D&D? No matter where you go, the most popular opinion regarding player character death is that, well, is that it sucks. But beyond that general assessment, we don't really talk about why it sucks. If you ask the average player, more likely than not you'll get some sort of arbitrary answer. Things like, oh, it's just not fun, or oh, it's just not fair. But those responses are usually highly emotionally motivated and don't usually have much critical thought put into them. So let's try to figure out where those feelings actually come from. Firstly, let's talk about why player character death supposedly isn't fair. If you've ever had a player that feels like their death wasn't fair, chances are it may have not been. And I know, I know, you may hate to hear that and get all up in arms, but hear me out. In every campaign, something bad is going to happen. That's the nature of D&D &D and storytelling in general. Players are supposed to experience emotional lows in the game, and one of the worst emotional lows that you can get in D&D is your character dying. But what matters is who they actually blame for that death. The most average response that you'll usually get is that they blame the dice, chance, whatever gods may be. If something random happened and their character dies, it's no one's fault, it's just sad and unfortunate. The best case scenario is that they blame themselves. And yeah, that sounds sadistic, but think about it. 
If a player loses their character, and then immediately they, or better yet, the whole party, starts to say things like, Oh no, we should have done X, or oh, we should have seen all the signs, we should have seen this coming, we could have prevented this, then you're probably doing something right. Yes, the party feels pretty crummy, but hopefully they'll learn to plan better or think more tactically in the future. They'll use this death as a learning experience to hopefully avoid future tragedy. So the best case scenario is that your players blame themselves. Middle ground, they blame the dice gods. Worst case, they blame you. They see their character death as an unfair event that couldn't have been avoided, and because you are the DM and you're in charge of all the events and all the planning, they believe that somehow, some way, even on a subconscious level, maybe you had it in for them. In their minds, their death simply wasn't fair. Like I've said before, DMs are frightfully easy to vilify. Let's say that the players do blame you for a player character death, but as in most cases, you honestly weren't trying to kill anyone. But if you've already gotten to that point where they're blaming you, you've already lost the war. At that point, you're on the defensive against your own players, and no matter what you do, you seem like the angry dictator that they need to overthrow. Even if the players back down, they'll usually only do so resentfully. So what we want to do is avoid this blame entirely. And the best way that we can avoid that is to proactively guide the player experience as early as possible. If you can train your players to think tactically both in battle and in roleplay encounters to avoid unfortunate outcomes, they'll be more inclined to blame themselves when something bad does happen. Let me go ahead and give you a little example. A combat encounter, since after all, combat is the primary cause of player character death anyway. Say that you've already been running some pretty straightforward combat encounters. The players run at the enemy, they wail on it for a while, and eventually win. Yes, they take damage, and yes, the HP amounts might end up being kind of close, but overall it's a pretty basic fight. After having run even as few as two or three of these kind of encounters, the players have already learned that they don't need to think tactically to win. They don't need to put much effort into combat in your campaign. And then suddenly, they get into a fight with an enemy that's much stronger than they are, or is much smarter than they are, and somebody dies. Well, from their perspective, they've done everything exactly the same as they've done before, and they haven't been encouraged to try anything else. So of course they might feel slighted at a sudden horrible failure. Even if you weren't trying to kill a PC, and you weren't trying to make this a horribly difficult encounter, you, the DM, are still technically at least partially responsible for this player character death. This is your campaign, and you are in charge here. If you can implement effective framing into your encounters from the very beginning, your players will learn to think about their actions, and then when they fail, they won't blame you for their shortcomings. And as the DM, that is your responsibility. It can be a really difficult line to walk and requires practice to get right, but that is, in my experience, the best way to avoid blame. Now that we've gone over this idea of fairness, let's get back to the original question. From what I've seen, the biggest reason why player character death is generally considered negative is actually due to the disruption that it brings to the campaign. When a player character dies, everything else kind of just grinds to a halt. In that single session, the dead player can no longer participate in the session, and they're left to just sort of sit there. The most engaging D&D related thing that they can do at that point is start drawing up their new character. And if the session continues for a while after a PC death, you'll notice a tension at your table as the other players take note of that one person that's quite literally not allowed to participate anymore. The best thing that you can do at that point is just end the session early. Whatever plot you might have had planned or that super important NPC you wanted to introduce the session, that all gets put on hold. On a larger scale, a character death can seriously disrupt the entire campaign for at least a couple sessions. Instead of the game revolving around the plot or whatever hook the party may have been previously pursuing, the game now must sort of revolve around the new player character. As DMs, there's only really two things we can do at that point. Either we go through great lengths to canonically integrate this new PC, maybe even giving them their own side mini quest or whatever so that they have time to uh, get to know the party and relearn each other's abilities. Or we can just sort of rush those introductions and smash the players together. Everybody has to act really, really meta. 
but at least it gets things done a little bit more quickly. Neither option is comfortable, and as the DM, you kind of have to figure out what balance of the two that you want. From a mechanical and analytical standpoint, that disruption to the campaign is the main reason why quote-unquote PC death is not fun. And the couple solutions that I've listed don't really even account for the worst-case scenarios. What if the players are in the middle of a dungeon and a new PC suddenly strolling in makes no sense at all? How much metagaming are we willing to do? Very little for the sake of roleplay, or a lot for the sake of the flow of the campaign? Unfortunately, there is no right answer. My friends, it is I, Count Strad von Zerovich, and I bid thee listen. The Guild of the Black Crow have produced over five hours of ambient sound design for my most beautiful and ancient land. As used by Twice Bitten, these ambient backgrounds include my most private and intimate of letters as well as bonus tracks not found in the Dungeon Master's Handbook. So, hear me now. I guarantee you safe passage to their camp. Support them, and perhaps we shall meet sooner than you think. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Curse of Strahd Twice Bitten. Before we begin, just a few quick uh, announcements and shout outs. First, as always, thank you to our continuing virtual tabletop sponsor for this campaign, Foundry VTT. Uh, next up, uh, Twy, do you want to do yours real quick? Yep. So, as you all know, we, are, we have some lovely emotes that have come out from the channel. You've got Perkins, and you have some... You've got Truffle, and of course, the lovely Nat 20 and Nat 1, made by our very own Jack, God bless. And you can get all that for just a subscription. I know one of you has got Amazon Prime lurking around somewhere. I know you can use it to subscribe to Twice Bitten to help the show become even better than it already is. But regardless, we appreciate all of you, and thank you so much for watching. Next up, Serena. Hello, hello, I'm back finally doing ads. Um, so just a reminder that we now on Twice Bitten has our own subreddit, reddit.com um, slash 
twice bitten D and D. Sorry, I'm typing a bunch of B's in this stupid paper. Um, you can find um, episode uh, discussion threads, uh, asset libraries, all of the fun stuff. If you have any questions about the stream, that's the best place to go um, for theorizing all of your fun community discussions, uh, reddit.com slash r slash twice bitten D and D. Uh, and on our YouTube channel, we post full length episodes, the full uncut fireside chats, uh, video essays, and now we're doing uh, featured highlights all of our favorite spooky moments from past sessions. You can find all of those and more at youtube.com slash C slash our curse of Strahd. All right. Thank you very much, Serena. Uh, I think that's all we have for today. So thank you all for sticking around and let's dive right back in. So with Lillison's mage hand now flinging carefully the door forth, for you to view what lies on the other side. You can see faintly the dark silhouettes of shapes in the room beyond. From what you can see at this point, you can see rows of new barrels filling this room, a narrow stone staircase spiraling upward in the southwest corner. And as you glance within, you can just faintly see a dark silhouette crouched behind one of the barrels. And as the door faintly creaks open, the head of the silhouette snaps toward the door. You can see crouching there in the darkness behind the barrel, the hunched over form of the man you saw atop the winch before. You can see the strange and matted clothes he wears, the wild hair and rotted teeth as he grits his teeth in surprise and a sliver of fear toward you, the glint of his skin faintly shimmering red as the blood traces down the sides of his cheeks and hands. You see it clas clasped into his hands, the gnarled black branch staff wrapped in several places. And now that you can see it up close, you can see a thick shroud of black smoke slowly billowing off of it, wisping away into the air and dissolving into faint shimmering veils as small beads of reddish blood drip from the sides. The man chokes for a moment, swallowing a surprised babble. And uh, it seems you have surprised him for a moment. What would you like to do? Uh, is is one option roll initiative and attack? Or, Up to you. What are y'all doing? I like that. I mean, that's just Lillison that sees it, right? Uh, I would say okay. anyone who's by the door can see him. So this so would probably that... be... I would say Metreon has eyes on him right now. Okay. He has seen this. Um... Well, since, uh, yeah, since I can see it and he apparently looks surprised, uh, he is instinctively going to fire at it. All right. Uh, and do I get a surprise round because I'm doing this and he hasn't caught on to us yet? Uh, if I could just get uh, everyone to, uh, did everyone make stealth checks before opening the door? No. Just Lillison. Yeah, just me. Gotcha. Uh, give me one moment, please. Uh, so as you're peering inside, by the way, just uh, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, Metreon. Yes. As you glance along the floor of the chamber, you can see small bits of bark that have been strewn across the floor. Um, looking, you can see, you know, bits of uh, peeled branches, uh, twigs and other bits, and and as you glance over toward the silhouette of the man, you see that his face is not merely the same red as before, but a hard cherry red. And you can see, similar to the druid you saw before, the thick shell of bark and branches covering his flesh. Gnarly. Uh, yeah. 
uh, so uh, seeing this, he is going to kind of instinctively try to find a place to hide, or to, would he be considered hidden because it's a surprise? So you are, he is surprised. Um, I would say, you know, given your stealth role, um, you're not really attacking from hiding, but you do get a surprise run. I would say you don't have advantage. Okay. Just a moment. All right. Am, 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 am I misremembering? Doesn't surprise concur advantage anyway? It does not. Yeah. Huh. It doesn't? Oh. I never knew. Thank you. All good. So then if I... If I wanted to hide, could I then get the advantage back? Um, I would say on your turn, yes, you can hide as a bonus action to get that advantage. Okay. Um, so then, uh, yeah. Sorry, my uh, my sheet doesn't seem to be working. Hold on. All good. I would also like to get in on this uh, roll initiative and uh, attack plan. Yeah. Likewise. All right. So everyone sees that Metreon is raising his uh, crossbow to shoot. What is everyone else doing? Uh, Aerithrin Deer, if there's something to shoot at, he's going to take a position behind him and lean around him to pearl a firebolt at it. And Amity is prepping the Thunder Wave spell. Ooh, Wilson, Wilson is, uh, keep up. Uh, keep up herself. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Wilson is raising her left hand with the uh, the gem in her palm gleaming. And then Kiva's positioning herself so that as soon as um, Amity and Metreon finish their first volley, she can just burst in and, and start attacking. Okay, cool. All right, perfect, uh, Metreon. Uh, I will say uh, you can go first, and then we'll let everyone else go, uh, given... All right, so I'm going to do well, actually, my uh, I don't think I have stealth from everyone. Could I just confirm? Because it looks uh, like I had stealth from Kiva and Lillison, but not anyone else. No. All right, give me a minute. All good. You think... That's an 11. Probably not. 21. I got the same thing. <laughs> you got a 21? <laughs> She got an eleven. No, the one is the one is Deer. <laughs> okay, got Aww. you. Uh, yeah, I got a twenty-one. All right. Ten. Oh wait, this is stealth checks, not initiative rolls. What am I doing? Yeah. Uh, no, it's stealth. Well, <laughs> well, fourteen on stealth. That's Ooh, better. snazzy. All right. So. So. Uh, with that, that's what, a 14, a 21, an 11, a 19, and an 18? Uh, two, seven. two 11s. Kiva and I both got 11s. Gotcha. All right, uh, with that, the group of you sneaking up, uh, he does not seem to have noticed you. Uh, as such, I'll be granting surprise for this. So, uh, Metreon, you're up first. Ba-bam. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot with my crossbow. Uh, that's going to be an 18. All right, an 18 will hit. And oh, what the? I've rolled like ass. Um, so that's, yeah, four points, three piercing, one sneak attack. Oh, that was so shitty. God, I hate that. <laughs> Ugh, the dice are cool. Such a waste of a surprise round. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, four points is four points. Yeah. yeah. That's one quick blind. If I was not firing a twig, I was firing at the druid. It's fine. I'm just upset about that. Understandable. Have a nice day. But yeah, uh, so it's four points total. All right, very good. Uh, four points damage as you hear this slight splintering of wood, and it crashes against the uh, druid's uh, bark-like skin. Uh, that's a hit. And yeah, all right. Uh, he kind of scutt scuttles back. He can't hide uh, mechanically, but he is kind of like tucking himself uh, back around just as much as he can. Okay, very good. All right, so uh, with that, uh, next up will be Amelia Erthrandir. All right. Uh, hey, uh, go for it. Mind if I? Okay, Amity steps into the room and casts 
th- 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 thunder wave. Uh, oh no, all these barrels. Fuck the barrels. <laughs> yeah, screw the barrels. Uh, he is going to have to make a constitution saving throw as shrapnel just flies up and hits him. That is a natural one. Yes. Woo! Okay, then he takes 12 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet away uh, against that wall. All right, Amity... and he actually cannot be pushed the full amount, so that'll be... Uh, Take some bludgeoning damage from that, right? Given the way I usually rule this, so that'll be uh, an additional 1d6 damage. Oh my god. Because he cannot go the other 10 feet. So that'll be an additional 5, so a total of 17. Jesus, Amity. Nice! <laughs> as as she pleads... Him. Please give up before we kill you. And he shouts out in surprise and shock as his body slams against the back wall, every single barrel in the room exploding into shards and splinters, metal bands popping and squealing in pain and distress as the thunderous blast of force sweeps the room. The dust begins to settle, and you see the man blearily draped up against the back wall, looking very close to falling completely. All right, uh, with that, that is the end of Amity's turn, uh, which means uh, Aethrandir and Kiva, you're up. All right. Aethrandir is going to step forward into the room past Metreon, raise his wand, its tip glowing a deep red-purple, and say, Try anything, and I will kill you. Just put down your weapons... Don't cast any spells. And we can talk this out. If you Maybe. if you try anything else, you're going to die. Can Ki assist on that intimidation by trying to look like as menacing as possible? <laughs> uh, this is an action, so I would say no. This is just Aerith Rindir making an action Boo. to do an intimidation check. Okay. Uh, let's find out. Nice. 21. Hey! All right. You watch as he winces back for a moment and then meets your A's and glares and then coughing for a moment as blood bursts from his from his uh, lips. Spits. I will never... Betray the great shadow to you. His eyes are wide as he hisses. I will never betray his trust. He will rise and you will fall. He reaches for the staff at his side and glances toward the door to the to your right as if he's a- aiming to struggle to leap toward it. God damn it. Can you not choose to live? And he's going to step in front of it. And that's his turn. All right, very good. Uh, with that, uh, Kiva is up. So there's the door, like two squares in front of her. Is that presumably where the guy is, or no? Um, yeah. You can see him at the very, yeah, he's at the back of the room. There's a lot of, like, okay, shattered, so- broken crates obstructing the path, but yes. Okay, so she's going to open that door. If she can, I don't know if she can. All right, the one that uh, you're the door's up open. against now. All inside. Are you? Yes, the door to the room where the man is is open. Where Metreon yeah, okay. is on the map. I thought if she went down that hallway, she could like cut him off there, but I guess not. No, I guess I mean trap there, right? Glancing into the room, you can see he's about to head toward. He was about to head toward where Aerith and Deer is now standing. You don't see any other exits from the room aside from the staircase where Amity is standing. Sorry, my foundry is crashing and it's not letting me look at anything. So So yes, from um, what you can see, all the exits are now blocked and uh, you can see that uh, the druid is cornered in the back of the room. Amazing. Okay, so um, Kiva is going to um, step into the room. I can't obviously do this token move right now. Um, She's going to step into the room and... um, can she like climb over the barrels to get to him, or is it's that something... difficult terrain? So it'll be half your movement to move through them, but you have enough movement to get there. Yeah, um, fuck yeah! So she's gonna do that, and she's just gonna like slash at him with the scimitar and try to get him to stand down—a non-lethal slash. Um, but yes. All right. 
uh, make it, uh, so you want me to roll that for you, or are you reloading? Yes, please. I, it's not letting me do anything right now. Actually, you know what, uh, someone else roll. Uh, Jack, can you roll for her, just over d20? Yeah. Thank you. I have access What's your dex? Oh, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, yeah, Ethrin Deer, if you can roll for her. Thank you, Ethrin Deer. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Ain't no thing. Foundry be like that sometimes. Or actually, no, now I can't access anything. All right, I'm I just going to roll it. What's your dex modifier? Yeah. I, I can't see my sheet in front of me. I think it's a three. Fairly sure. It's Hold on, it looks like I'm back. It looks like I'm back. Okay. Yeah, nope. it looks like I'm back. Okay, Thank if you're back, then don't take my roll. <laughs> uh, you can't just not take that roll. Well, I wasn't uh, me. It, it was her that was rolling. It was me. So. Uh, 11? I don't know if that hits. Uh, an 11... Unfortunately, does not hit. It glances off the side, shearing off a thin layer of bark from the armor that he's pulled around himself. All right, she's gonna uh, stay there, right, right on top of him, though. All right, very good. Uh, with that, Lillison, you are last up. Okay. Um, how badly hurt does he look? Uh, from here, it's hard to tell with Erthrin Deer and Kiva in the way, but he's definitely like limping. He's doubled over. Does not look good. Okay. Um, Lillison will slowly and hopefully menacingly walk forward. And um, All right. it seems that my foundry is also having issues, but that's okay. Uh, she's going to walk forward until she is standing right behind Kiva. And she's going to direct her mage hand to like, grab onto this guy's hair and pull his head back. All right, I will say that Mage Hand only can ex- express 10 pounds of force, so it won't be very powerful, but it, I guess it, it can make a point if you like. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to put on a show of dominance. All right, it's working, uh, make, darling. Make, uh, I would say make an athletics check using your charisma modifier. Oh my goodness. What does that even look like? Um, uh, just make a charisma just... check and add your athletic, add your proficiency mod of, or make a charisma check, and then if you're proficient in athletics, add your proficiency bonus. Um, that would be a one d twenty plus three. I cannot roll right now, so I'm gonna very quickly reload. All good. Very good. Do you want one of us to roll? If you wouldn't mind. All right. That is a 22. All right. So with that, reaching forward, uh, you grab onto the back of his hair and kind of pull the matted uh, silvery black uh, bits of hair and hide kind of hanging off the back of his head. He grunts, struggling. It seems he could probably pull himself free relatively easily, but for a moment he seems surprised. Willison looks over at Kiva and says, uh, Place the point of your sword right there. Oh, on her next turn she's going to do exactly that. All right, uh, but with that I will need everyone to actually roll initiative. Just to see. Awesome, uh, okay. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So let me add everyone to the tracker. Seventeen. Sixteen. Eighteen. Twenty-two. Oh. oh. Ah, damn it. That's an eight. All right. Uh, with that, uh, Lillison, anything you would like to do? Um, Lillison is going to, you know, carefully and again, you know, uh, trying to assert dominance, uh, walk very deliberately around Kiva and end up on this guy's left. Uh, Taking over from her mage hand, she is going to personally grab his hair and uh, try to pull his head back. All right, make an af- actual athletics check for me, please. Come on. Come on. Don't fail me now. Ten. Four. Oof. Hey. Yes. Yes. 
All right, you grab his head and pull him back, holding him toward you and pressing him against the back wall. He struggles, uh, babbling at you in a strange language that you do not understand. Okay. Um, as an action, I'm going to direct my mage hand to let go of his hair and instead um, put a little bit of force on his chest. Um, you know, it it's still only 10 pounds of force, but it's uh, it's for the it's for the aesthetic. The theatrics of it all. As yeah. you do, he snarls and twists his head, struggling, and he spits on the ground, barely missing you. That's not what you have to do this, didn't you? Or Kirilu? One of them did tell me I know it. What is this betrayal? Lillison raises an eyebrow as uh, she listens to these names, but uh, doesn't say anything. Just looks back at Kiva and nods towards Kiva's scimitar. scimitar. And that's her turn. All right. At this point, his gaze flits over and Amity and Kiva. Uh, Amity up first, then Kiva. What would you like to do? Okay. Uh, well, Amity would like to end this non-lethally. So she is going to go up and basically the only non-lethal attack she has is just do a tail whip. All right. Uh, are you ready to attempt an unarmed strike? Yeah. I mean, what yes. else? I mean, if you'd like, uh, there are a number of broken pieces of barrel that you could probably use as improvised weapons if you like. I think my tail is probably stronger than those. Uh, Unless this is much there's more. This is, this parts is, of we the love detail. improvised weapon rulings that I don't know. It's for um, the aesthetic. That yeah, they would be this. mechanically stronger, but I don't even know what detail. you add to this. But it's a thirteen raw, like without additions. Uh, thirteen does not hit. Did you add like dex or strength or proficiency bonus on this strike? Uh, I think unarmed strikes add strength. Yeah, I would add. I add, I think you add strength, but not proficiency. Oh, okay, it's a fifteen. So that'd be a, Fifteen. Uh, that still does not hit. I'm afraid. Jesus. Dad. Is he considered like restrained? No, he's just he's grappled. grappled. Okay. All right. Well, turn to Kiva. That's that's her turn. All right, Kiva, you're up. Um. Okay. <laughs> so, do we really not want to kill this guy? That's such a buzzkill. Um, I mean, what does Kiva want to do? Kiva just wants to fucking end this, so she's gonna slash it. with her scimitar. Yeah, fuck it. Fuck it! She's gonna slash his throat with a scimitar. Alright, roll to. to attack. Patiently trying to pull up my sheet. There we go. What's that? A 20! And six slashing damage. Come on. Tell me I did it. Alright. Uh, that hits, and that'll do it. How do you want to do this? She is just going to give Lillison a look, um, almost like, I'm sorry, I'm not patient, and then just slice across his throat very neatly. All right, a neat cut erupts, blood burbling out. He chokes, wheezing, gurgling, and as the light begins to leave his eyes, he gasps out, The roots of the tree grow deep. You can uproot me, but the Goliath will never wither. Shut And the, the light fuck fades from his eyes, up. and he collapses on the ground. His fingers relaxing, and the staff going rolling across the floor before coming to a stop at Erthrinder's feet. Can uh, can Kiva, since that's sort of in range at her, can she just like take the staff and sort of stick that on her pack too? <laughs> Uh, if you'd like, Erthrendir, you uh, before don't, 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 don't do that. Sorry. What? Sorry. We can sell it. D I mean, look at that. Look at it. Kiva will uh, wrap her hand in her cloak and then pick up the staff. Wait, wait, wait. Wilson's going to send her mage hand over to pick up the staff. Thank oh, you. Oh, that's much smarter. See, you have the brains of the operation. Erthrendir right. shoots her a dirty look at this. That... Alright. Are we done here? Yeah, are we is, done here? Is, um, I think it's time to go. Is Truffle feeling any better? 
and he's not feeling very good, but she's she's happy to have an excuse to go wander off and go ask Druffle. Uh, how uh, was that? It? Did we did we did we get it? How long does speak with animals last? Ten uh, minutes. Oh, it's gets ten minutes, right? I'm all checked to make yeah, sure. I would say it's over by now. This, nice. what, how this did whole ten thing, minutes pass? Between, yeah, this whole thing only lasted six seconds. You yes, but you cast it like a while ago. Yeah, but she talked to the like, ravens. You had the fight with the druid. You talked with the, the ravens. Air. Yeah, you've had a lot of conversations oh. with animals during this one spell. Okay. Dragon says no more fucking talking. <laughs> I mean, you're welcome to spend another yeah. spell slot. I mean, how does Truffle look? I, I can Truffle tell, you know. looks very reluctant to approach that staff. Like he's like looking toward the room balefully and just like shivering very faintly. I I think he thinks that the the stick is is the monster, not the the, the stick. The person. I mean, Peg's got good sense. Did you see that thing? And actually, can now that er Lillison's holding it, can Erthrendir take a look at it? All right. See if he knows what the hell this is. You glance over the staff. Uh, it appears to be a spongy black length of wood, uh, slightly twisted and gnarled with, again, that faint flicker of grayish-black ash that constantly filters off of it from no discernible source. The red droplets of blood that you previously saw seem to have uh, dried and congealed, now just long black stains that run down the length of the wood. Other than that, it seems to be difficult to make out any more details from it. All right. Sorry I yelled or snapped at you, Kiva, but I think this thing's dangerous. Oh, no, I think we should fully destroy it. Her I, I don't want to keep this horrific thing. I, I do think we should fully destroy it, though. Same, but I would like a little time to figure out what on earth this is first, if you don't mind. Once we're well, done. Uh, I mean, I think now that that guy's done for, we probably have a little bit more time. Should we go find the Martikovs? Uh, hold on. There are still yeah. two of them left somewhere in here. They did well, say they five, didn't they? Uh, I can he keep holding on to this. Um... Yeah. It, it just be careful. I, I think it should be fine, but be careful. I've uh, dealt with stuff like that before. You don't want to give it. Just treat it like you'd treat a mm, cast. Treat it how you'd treat a lit match in a lamp oil factory. All right, oh. held by my mage hand, at least ten feet away from me. That works, or just covered in something whatever well this is going on uh dm what was the barrel that got uh spiked um what do you mean well Lillison had relayed that one of the wine barrels had gotten uh, that he was pouring something into it so which one was it uh yes it would be the back in the fermentation vat room it's the one all the way to the west the one all the way on the left side Okay, so the Drew was pouring something. He's going to go ahead and so it's in the room that I'm in, right? Or is it a different room? Yes. Okay, so yes, he's going to go ahead room. and then I want to just because I've had a little experience with wine before. Um, I want to climb up and I want to just like take a deep whiff of it to see if I can detect what it was that was thrown in there. Sure. Uh, you can make your way up the stairs back to the place where the druid was positioned. Um, give me a perception check. One moment. Six. I'm rolling like ass today. Difficult to tell. You're not sure what the exact scent is. There's a lot of wine in here, and it's, the scent is pretty strong. Okay. He'll back off and hang around the others. Okay. So we we got 
two people left in here and an unknown number of those creatures. Do we try and finish the job or say, hey, Mr. Mardikov, good enough? Well, wait. How can we even get back to Mr. Mardikov? It... Oh, wait, Randy. Didn't you say that these little, little plant thingies, uh, these little tree buggers, that you say something about like a control, right? Yeah. Uh, summoned or created creatures often have some bastard with magic taking the reins. Well, I figure if we at least kill the other two, uh, maybe it shuts their, uh, I don't know, their orders, their directive down, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, maybe no, that take them out. The then we don't have to worry about sneaking out. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good idea. Though I do vote we take a moment to rest before we do that. I think Kiva Millicent are pretty banged up. It would be nice to sit down for just a moment. Yeah, does give them time to fortify, but we have the numbers advantage now. Well, no, they still have the numbers advantage. They got those little tree thingies. Before we rest, Point can taken. we make sure that there's no way that those tree thingies could get inside? Yeah, yeah, the good sense, Amity. Let's yeah. shut some doors. Uh, Metron will help uh, Lillison, not Lillison, uh, Amity, and if Aerithrin Deer's helping, too. Yep, uh, to he'll fan of, like, out. And... Roll some of these barrels and maybe stack them up against all the exits or entrances that uh, lead into this chamber. So this specific room, the big one? Yeah, the big one. Gotcha. Yep. All right, so I would say that you can probably close um, all of the exits, uh, obstruct them mostly with barrels. You know that the barrels are empty. Uh, it, so it's more for like, than... it's more for just like so that we know if something's coming. A lot. Fair. Yeah. So I would say you're easily able to close the doors. You notice that there are uh, two doors um, to the upper left of the room, the northwest, I believe. Uh, one of them is barred. And the other one is locked with a long chain and a padlock. Okay. Well, two. We don't have to. We don't have to stack barrels on those then. But that's good to know. If yeah. the master theory doesn't work out, we might have to stay here for a few days and and call for help. But yeah, that's okay if if they don't get inside. I don't think they should. This place is pretty pretty well defensible. If we're smart, hell, if we want to, we can set up on the upper floors you know, nail some boards over the windows and just shoot out gouts of magic or arrows and pick them off one by one. We've got by far the better defensive position. Well, let's just hope it doesn't come to that. And uh, as he says that, Metreon kind of just brushes past uh, Randy and he's going to go ahead and try to pick the lock of the padlock door. All right. Uh, if you're going to do that, give me a Thieves Tools check. While this is happening, um, Kiva is going to step down from the barrels and offer a hand to Lillison to help her down as well if she needs one. Lillison is going to look at Kiva's hand and then just shake her head and uh, push herself to her feet um, and resume her uh, 10 feet distance from Kiva and everybody else. Queen of social distancing. If we're going to take a little rest, can we do it in this big room so that Truffle can stay away from your stick. Works fine for me. Uh, that was a 19. Um, I'll leave the um, staff over here. Yeah, that's fine. And yeah, that was a 19 on the Thieves Tools check. All right. The padlock clicks open. And which and door is it? For you if you'd like. This is the one uh, to the upper left. Uh, could you right take here. me there? Okay, yeah. It is now unlocked. Uh, you can see that they are a pair of large uh, doors, uh, sliding doors. Uh, I'm going to open it just a hair, just a crack to see what's through it. I'm not going to open them all the all way right. since they are big. Uh, but what do I all see right. past it? You peer out through the sliding wooden doors and you see beyond, resting on a flagstone veranda, three five-foot diameter wooden tubs. They're and from here, you can just faintly see their insides stained with, seems to be grape juice. 
Each tub has a short ladder bolted to its side and a catch basin tucked underneath. You can see, hooking up beneath the flagstone, a number of withered roots and vines, blackened and gnarled, almost curled up like claws or slender fingers reaching up to grasp anything that might pass through the air. In the distance in the mist that floats lazily along the vineyard, you can see the skulking silhouettes of the needle blights in the distance. Uh, I shut the door, slam it shut, and put the padlock back on. What's out there? Just, uh, just more of them things. Of course. Couldn't get that lucky. All right. Thank you. Thank you for checking that out. Nice to know all our angles. Yeah, all of our angles are covered in fucking vines and shit. Well... On the plus side, none of them are immediately trying to kill us, so I'll call that a win. You know, maybe it's because I'm a city boy, but I just can't do it all this great anyway. It's just too much. Why not? Like, just the menace of it, or something else? I, I, it's my attempt at a little bit of lighthearted humor uh, in these trying times. Uh, I understand if the joke did not land, but... <laughs> oh, oh, no, sorry, I'm just... No, I'm bad at that. No, that makes sense. I'm a city boy, too. I just kind of have gotten to know these parts because I've had to, and it's, you know, just as menacing as it was. I just vaguely know my way around it now. Although, admittedly, my cabin didn't have needle blights sieging it every other day. Just very confused bears. Right. Uh, we want to take a rest then. Just, yep. Yeah. Earthendeer's like already laid out on the stairs at this point, just kind of breathing heavily. Yeah, yeah. Find a so spot. So, quick question. Um, you aren't able to, are you going to take the time to like roll one or more barrels up to the top floor? Because there are two doors up there as well. And no, so just this floor. In the room no, the no. Just this floor. No, we're just walking the outer way. exits. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, is Lillison staying in the room with the staircase? She is. Um, she is leaving the staff in the corner and then she is sitting down in the middle of the room, um, keeping an eye on the staff and also keeping an eye outside. Gotcha. Okay. After a uh, little bit, actually, she's going to move over to the door that is over here and just press her ear to it. All right, make a perception check for me. That is a 13 perception. 13? You don't hear anything on the other side. Okay. Okay. All right. With that, are you all turning in for a short rest then? Yep. So once he's reasonably sure things are secure, he's going to spend, he's going to join Lillison, keeping a comfortable distance and sort of examine the staff, making sure only to ever touch it with his handkerchief. So yeah, that's how he's going to spend his time probably. Okay. Uh, before Kiva takes a short rest, she's going to go into the room um, also with Erythrine <laughs> to listen. <laughs> uh, and she's going to look at Lillison and uh, and just say, can I talk to you for a second? Yes, certainly. I just, uh, I don't know, I feel like there's something we should talk about or something. Um, do you mind if we go uh, somewhere else? Erythrin Deer stands up at this. Just tell me when you're done. Lillison shrugs a little bit and then scoots all the way back to the back corner. Are you all right? E yes. Um... If you want to have a quiet conversation, you're welcome to join me back here. 
Yeah, I'll do that. And she will uh, go over to the second row of barrels and sort of kick the druid's body over <laughs> towards the other side and like sit where he was. The others seem to be uh, either recovering from this very quickly or putting on very good faces. So that's a blessing at least. Yeah, I was uh, a little nervous after that first uh, woman that things were going to get uh, hard to corral. So if they're putting on brave faces, it's uh, good. But I I noticed you seemed fine, and I just wanted to make sure, you know, that that wasn't a front on your end, too. Are you all right? This is nothing... You know, it's, I'm sure maybe a few years ago, I probably would have had a problem dealing with death and dealing with being the one who deals it out. But I don't know, when you walk in on your dismembered daughter and then kill her father, sort of uh, takes the sting out of things. That's a part of life. And if I have to kill to survive, then I'm going to do that. Lillison's gaze strays to the dead druid, and she says, It is a lot easier when, um, you know that they would happily kill you, or that they would happily die rather than cooperate. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying I'm, you know, going to start going out and murdering people willy-nilly, but, uh, yeah, it uh, makes it a lot easier knowing that he wanted me dead just as much as I wanted him dead. And it gives me practice for Count von Zarevich. Wilson gives her a, a grim little smile and uh, she says, I had a uh, an interesting little talk with Erthrandir not that long ago about the importance of keeping in practice, so to speak. I don't think he interpreted it quite the same way that I did, but... Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with um, keeping your skills sharp, and as fucked up as it is, this was actually a pretty decent distraction. <laughs> that it is, hasn't it? This has been far easier than I expected. I'm sort of waiting for the other shoe to drop. Every time we face one of these, I'm like, this has to be the strongest one. The, the last one that we have to get through for this to end, but it hasn't worked out that way. We'll be fine, as long as uh, none of the others lose their nerve at the last moment. We'll all be fine. It's hard, I understand that, for people who don't deal with death like that to, to take a life. But it seems like this place is intent on changing people. And... Uh, so far, I think it's done its job. I haven't really thought of it that way. And I'm not sure whether I believe it now, but I'll keep that in mind. Well, it's definitely led to some interesting realizations about myself. Wilson just kind of like looks up quirks an eyebrow while not looking at Kiva and just like gives Kiva the opportunity to either expand or not as she prefers. Look, I don't mean to make this all like, uh, you know, secretive girl talk, but uh, I don't know. I did something I've not ever done before and it didn't really work out, 
very well, and uh, perhaps it's just the place. Maybe I shouldn't anticipate nice things. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Anyway, we're alive, we're breathing. That's enough for me for now. And I've got a really cool new headdress. And she's going to like reach into her bag and pull on the headdress and very awkwardly like model it for her. <laughs> All right, wait, uh, make sure that thing doesn't have lice before you put it on. <laughs> oh, fuck, that's a good point. She's going to take it off very quickly and like inspect it. <laughs> Well, uh, it seems all right, I suppose. I don't know. I mean, it I figured we could just to sell it. From a first glance. Okay, that's good. Um, I figured we could just sell it, that and her weird teeth necklace, but I'm keeping this uh, staff thing. I, I do wonder whether, whether if you put all of that on, we would be able to fool any of the others if they didn't get a close look at you, perhaps keep them off balance for a moment. Kiva does her best, uh, she puts it back on her head and does her best, like, spooky, wild woman face. Wilson looks impressed. Well, I think this might be helpful then. I just, I just wanted to say it's nice to have someone I can share a kinship with even if it's not over the happiest subjects. Well, I find that those who share a kinship over the difficult ones seem to hold together better when things get difficult. It's it's easy for fair weather friends to leave when the weather turns foul. But someone who's used to a perpetual shitstorm, they're the ones you want to keep around. She shrugs a little bit, nods, and uh, sort of leans back and uh, puts her head back against the wall. Kiva, um, sort of getting the hint, will move over to that other side and do the same and then take her rest. All right. While this is happening, what's going out in the outer room? Are Metreon, Erthendir, and Amity doing anything on their own, or are they just uh, recuperating? Yeah, Metreon's just kind of sitting his back up against one of the barrels. Uh, at one point, he just looks up. You know, the irony is not lost on me here. What? Well, I mean, that, that werewolf or whatever it was took my wine skin, and now I'm in a house of wine, a vineyard, a winery, and none of it I can drink. I'm surprised you're not drinking straight from the tap. Well, I mean, Lil said she saw someone pouring stuff in there, and I'm, I'm not an ass. I'm not stupid. And, you know, for all I know, there could be poison in it, or you know, putting some kind of magic potion in there, trying to turn everybody into newts or something. I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, no. Honestly, I. We'll see if we can find one. There's got to be. Somebody has to have a nice vintage kept in a locked desk drawer or something. It's hardly a price to pay for them getting their home back. We know, Amity. Oh, go on. Well, the one that was seen being poisoned is, is that one you're standing in front of right now, right? No, no, it's the one to my, my left. Or oh, right. I see. I don't know, not good with directions. Oh, then all of them could have been poisoned. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll I'm, we'll get you, I mean, I, I was going to say I'm sure there's going to be wine somewhere, but I, that'll be true eventually, at least. Mm. Yeah, who knows? Might be some cleric in town they can have come by here and purify the stuff. Or somebody can research an antitoxin, I don't know. You yeah, trust uh, the ladies in there with uh, that, that that staff, you know, that, that thing that was making Truffle all upset. I think 
neither of them are stupid. I mean, I don't think it's going to, like, grow claws and, you know, skitter after them, laughing maniacally. But, yeah, fair enough. yeah they've got conversations to have. Yeah, don't they always? You know, Amity, we, uh, when this is all done, we should uh, do another another one of those uh, have you, uh, never have our ever's. Uh, maybe this time everyone will tell the truth. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and and this time, um, every, we'll, we'll take a shot every time we've done it. I told the entire truth. I don't know about y'all. Insight check. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> Go for it. Nobody would lie during Never Have I Ever. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Uh, as far as you know. I worry you. I worry you. He was telling the truth, apparently. Yeah. Uh, he'll, yeah, he'll just kind of sit back. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I just... I I'm happy we're getting these people their house back, but... I'm gonna... Remember this place for a long time, if you catch my drift. After, you know... He kind of jerks his head at the druid's body. Well, if I wasn't, uh, if we wasn't inundated with so many uh, those uh, little little tree thingies, uh, I'd, I might have been out here. They were gone. I've, I've got enough to to live comfortably in that Valaki place, uh, at least for a little while. And uh, yeah, this place feels like hell. Agreed. A right proper hell. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think anywhere we go we're going to be terribly comfortable. Nope. Nope. No. I'm not, uh, I'm, not uh, I'm not envisioning any kind of comforts uh, anytime soon. I think we might have to struggle against the ropes until everything is set ablaze. It makes it ablaze. That can be a nod. Yeah. I've had my fill of fire for my whole life, if you don't mind. Wait, wait, love, what do you mean by set ablaze? I'm not rightly sure, but if we struggle to get out of here, then I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of dangerous things after us. I mean, I can think of one. Oh, yeah, yeah, a big one, yeah. too. Like seven feet tall. I wonder if he's that tall. If he just like, it's just like an optical illusion. You know, he's just so spooked of him that he always just kind of looks taller than you anywhere he is. You know, like we've uh, never noticed that he's actually on stilts the whole time. Like uh, a series <laughs> of apple boxes. You know, uh, I mean, <laughs> maybe he has really harsh shoes, like platform boots. Ah, uh, please. <laughs> you think that he's ashamed that. He tries to be all intimidating, but he was born five foot nothing, so he's got well, I mean, to. He can still be intimidating, but he's short. I think he's just, you know, he's got a, a, a persona to live up to, you know. Well, know. it's a successful Maybe. one. Maybe we shouldn't talk about him. No one knows he's, he's affected our lives as much as he is already. I honestly, I feel like that's what he wants. For, to be talked about in whispers. I mean, Maybe he at this point, that. Uh, Metron fishes through his bag and uh, pulls out one of the coins and shows it off to uh, Arthur and Amity, kind of showing both sides having uh, one having uh, Strahd's profile, the other one having what looks to be like some kind of sigil. Then maybe to talk about something else so as not to please him. Um, you know how magic is a little weird here? Vividly. The, the things that I was doing earlier, where I was telling that story about the tiger, and I guess only the start of the story about the, um, the quills, I don't really know what that was. I don't think it was a spell like my other ones. Yeah, I was about to ask. I've never heard of any bardic abilities that do that.
What's the what's the alternative then? I also don't really know where those stories came from. I I just it's like it's like someone was telling them to me. Wait, all the way here. And that's just, not like something in your book of fables. That's like no. Are you just getting these stories in a the moment then, like improv? Well, I I don't feel like I'm just inventing them. But like you're relaying them. That's both frightening and kind of cool. It's more it frightening. It is kind of cool. I'm, I am wondering. I I told you earlier this, Metreon, that I've, well, okay. The past three nights, I've dreamt of wolves, and then we were chased by wolves, and then I dreamt of some bats, and then some bats attacked within the minute. Um, and then last night. I couldn't tell what it was, but there was some gigantic hulking silhouette. But that that one hasn't attacked us yet today, so maybe we're in the clear and I'm just imagining things. Well, I mean, the druid said something about the great shadow. Yeah, well, that is talk. quite Wait. a good point. That oh, I should I I really should have realized that earlier. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, you're getting to it now. Did this uh? Great big silhouette, silhouette uh, do anything in your dream? Did it did it, uh, hurt you or you know make any other bad things happen? Well, a bunch of mice were running away from it, so it was probably scary. And there was there was one mouse who had like a, a sun carving in him that was probably some kind of religious leader. But as soon as it bodged in, I woke up. What, what I couldn't even see what it was. What what kind of sun? Um, just like a, a circle with some s spokes coming out, if if that's what you mean. I'm I'm being correct about this dragon, right? I'm not like misremembering things. It was uh, the image of a sunburst. You know, the 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 kind of wavering uh, flares coming off the side of the sun. Um, you know, very like a, a traditional kind of religious iconography of uh, a clear, uh, full sun. Yeah, and he will trace a little sunburst out in the dust on the floor. Does it look right, like the sunburst you... that was at either of the churches? I was about to say it perfectly resembles the sunburst that you have seen at both churches thus far. Metreon lurches forward and almost gets on all fours as he looks over the tracing in the in the dirt in the floor. Uh, it, are you all right? Uh, we've we've seen this sun. This is uh, this is uh, that last ender. Uh, the sun god, god of the dawn, I, dawn morning oh, lord. Oh, holy shit, you're right. From the church back in the village. Yeah, with the crazy man. But also the church in Valaki. Oh, is it? I haven't been by. All right. So, at the same time as you start getting stories from a place you can't realize, you also start getting oddly prophetic dreams. Do I have that correct? Right. I, I guess I was wondering earlier if the vampire was sending me the dreams, but maybe it's something else. Maybe what they're, they're connected. What happened to the, to, the, to the mouse with the sun on it? Um, the other mice looked up to it, but then they all, well, it, it, I see the thing is that the dream ended just when the, the big shadow thing barged in. And so you'll have to wait for the part two. <laughs> wow. So you just, are, are dreams normally sequential like that? I've only ever had one. Metron wipes the drawing away uh, and stands up. All right. We need to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's... Wait, you've only had one dream. Sorry. Is this something that we know already? Uh, no, you don't. He kind of, kind of blanks a bit. Yeah, yeah, uh, well, you know, elves don't dream. We do the thing where we dive back into memories and past lives and all that. But in the village, I had one while I was passed out on the street. After eating that pie, actually, I think that was it. I was, a uh, back home for first time in a very long time. 
oh, I, both of the times I ate one of those, they gave me a very pleasant dream. Um, not especially exciting or happening, just quite comfy. Just pleasant, just yeah. Just reading with, with truffle. Yeah, I was swimming in the ocean. <sighs> I wish I had one of them dreams. It sounds lovely. I mean, yeah. it was a great pie, but... It was. Man, well, we listen, need to get... Uh, enough well, maybe you should have another one, then. Well, maybe I will, but uh, until then, I'll have it as a celebra celebratory pie. But uh, first things first, we don't, we, we've got two other druids yeah. to take care of. Yep. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Here, let me remind me, as we finish this up, I should... Or now, nah, we've been talking. We can't have reasonably been song of resting this. Probably not. Okay, fair. Yeah. I forgot about Song of Rest. I've never lost any HP. <laughs> <laughs> well then, let's see if the girls are ready. Right. Or Everyone other girls. Rolled Sorry, on. Amity. Would they like to regain? Uh, as I presume the uh, short rest comes to a close. Yeah, Kiva, Kiva's doing one right now. <laughs> we'll see how that takes her. All right. All right. I appreciate the aesthetic of Lewis and rolling and then subtracting from the, the result that she wrote. <laughs> I love it. I, I love it. I love it too. And I also love that that still took me to full HP because I have so few HP. Uh... All right. Has everyone oh, completed um... their short rest? Yes. Can I um, also check the that druid's body for anything. Did I do that already? No. Uh, you did not. You may make an investigation check if you would like. Yes, I would yeah. love to do that. Also, since Arthrandir has been spending most of this rest looking at the staff, can he get a better idea of what's going on there? Uh, are you... The staff is still in the room with Lilithan, I believe. I don't think you... I mean, I presumed he took it when he came out. So was, that's what he was doing for the most Given the that time. you've spent a large amount of time talking, you would need to spend another short rest uh, inspecting it, I believe. All right, fair enough. That's a nat 20 for a 21. Very nice. Uh, unfortunately, he has absolutely nothing on his person. Oh, oh damn it! Oh, Raspberries. You found Not his embarrassing like a, birthmark, though. A <laughs> coin or, like, nope. cool jewelry? Nothing? Nope. Damn nope. it. He's got Just nothing. 21. Just really, like, awful teeth. Like, really, really <laughs> bad teeth. Uh-uh. Kiva just like angrily like walks away from the <laughs> body. Like, fuck this. Not like, even in like it. any belly button lint. There's a little bit of belly button lint. Actually, Kiva leaves that, that for the for the ravens to pick through. <laughs> Ugh. Very good. So, with that, as your short rest comes to a close, as Kiva begins making her way back into the room, and Erthrandir begins making his way forward, um, there's a moment of. Uh, quiet. Um, are the two, are, are you guys uh, doing anything? Uh, Erthony is going to kind of shake himself and stand up. Well, basement next, I presume. We heard somebody down there or something. Uh, let's go down. Yeah. Also, I vote we kind of blitz whoever we've got left make sure we as soon as you say that hurt. yeah as soon as you say that you hear the slam of a door from the upper floor and as you watch whirling kiva your eyes tracing upward into the upper level amity you hear the slam of a second door from the opposite side and on the top level you can now see both doors entering the room skulking, needle-covered silhouettes marching in, assuming that positions on either side of the upper balcony of the room, their hollow eyes glowering down over you. And then you hear a wordless, garbled command from the upper balcony beyond sight. And the Blights raise their arms toward you, the needles bristling along their arms. I need everyone to roll initiative, please. I don't know. Ah! Oh my god. 
three. Nine. Eleven. Four. All right, very good. Uh, with that, Metron, you are first up. You see the balcony suddenly flooding with three, four, no, five needle blights, all of them glaring down toward you. Uh, since we Their said arm we pointed were... toward Kiva and Amity. One of them pointed toward you. <laughs> they, what they, you doing, uh... Metron? <laughs> <laughs> He's meowing angrily. <laughs> Battle cry. No, so uh, since we said we were going down to the basement, uh, and since that staircase in the other room presumably leads down to the basement, uh, Earth, uh, and Earth and Deer, Metreon is going to... Uh, he's going to go ahead and just bolt there. All right. And he's going to use his uh, bonus action to dash. All right, are you going to use your... Uh, are you going into that room with Lillison? Yeah, yeah, but I'm going down the steps. Uh, the stairs do not go downstairs. They only go up. That's what, I, that's what I was asking. Yes, they only go up. Are you looking to go upstairs? No, I'm looking to go downstairs since we were talking right. about going to the you basement. Cannot, you cannot do it through this room. Okay, so do I know where the basement is? Or the access uh, point for that? You know that there was a ramp that went down if you head right from here. That's the okay. ramp that you came down from originally. It so continued that's down what I'm gonna do. to the basement. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Bonus action, dash, movement, and then action if it gets me further away from, gets me out of this room. All right. All right. Uh, with that. All right, you're heading downstairs? Yes. All right. I will relocate you. As you rush down the ramp, panting, chest heaving, muscles burning, uh, as your rest is so rudely uh, ended and interrupted. Um, with that, um, Kiva, Erthrandir, and uh, Amity, you're, you see Metreon turn and flee, a terrible horror in his eyes. And as you turn up on the balcony above, you can see the needle bites above you lifting their arms and taking aim. Uh, they're going to attack you. Uh, Great. No. All right. So uh, this is going to be um, two attacks against Amity. This is going to be a 12 to hit. Hits. All right. You suffer 10 points of piercing damage as thorns and needles Fun. slam and hammer into your chest and sides. As this happens, uh, like... Flame flares up around <gasps> Amity's body and yes. shoots back in totally involuntarily here at the needle blade. Oh my god! You must make a, ah! a good dexterity save. <laughs> nice. Oh come on, come on! This is uh, Fuck what, it up. What exactly? uh, this is hellish rebuke. Hellish rebuke. Beautiful. Cast All right, like, dexterity doing? saving throw. Oh my god. All right. Please, that's, please. that's going to be Fuck. a deck save. That's an eight. <gasps> yes! 25 fire damage. Holy yes. shit! <laughs> <laughs> you watch as Amity, her head flings back, and with an involuntary, primal, diabolic scream, this bolt of black fire lances through the air, boiling with the faces of skulls and tormented souls and screams of rage and desperate protection and this bubbling crimson maelstrom of fire and heat and screaming souls slams with the needle blight coursing through it and charring it until there's nothing more than a small pile of cinders on the ground it's Very good. dead that was dope but you still I believe you still take the 10 piercing damage. That is correct, yeah. but there's another attack coming? Uh, yes, there is a second one. This is going to be a 13 to hit. That will also hit. All right, you suffer seven points of piercing damage. I'm still up. All right. <sighs> okay. With that, uh, the three in the up upper side, um, two of them are going to take aim at Kiva. 
That's a five to hit and a six to hit. Uh, <laughs> neither of those hit. All right. The final one, you hear marching coming from up above and turning. You can see the other needle bite maneuvering itself around the room as if aiming to get a better shot. It pauses the top of the stairs uh, 10 feet away from you, Air Thundir, uh, just up to your south. Yep. All right. Uh, with that, as the blights end their turn, you hear the sound of footsteps echoing, uh, coming forth from the uh, west side balcony. And from there, you see a man with uh, pale ashen skin and a full rack of antlers that tower up over his head, wearing a long, ragged green and brown robe. He holds up a staff and directs it toward you. Regardless of what you have done to the others, I promise you, you will not depart this place this day. Make your final recompenses and prepare yourselves to meet the earth from whence you came. And lowers the staff toward you and shouts a word. You can see his skin is shimmering with uh, bark and there's strange silver slivers of energy that surround his legs. And he is going to point directly toward Erthrandir and Amity and you watch as weeds and vines begin, begin wriggling up in the air. Uh, this is actually going to be Kiva, Erthrandir, and Amity, all three of you. Uh, I need all of you to make a strength saving throw, please. Oh, my favorite. Oh, no. 19. Nice. 21. 7. All right, so with that, Erthrandir, you are restrained as the grasping weeds and vines spread up from the ground, pushing the flagstones aside and cracking them as the black growths swell around your le your legs and ankles and snaring them in place. All right, uh, with the other two of you managed to uh, pull your way free, but you can see Erthrandir now bound on the staircase with that is now covered with these black uh, ashen gray roots that have now ensnared him in place. Uh, with that, the the man nods and steps back out of sight. <laughs> you hear a cry of defiance from above with several squawks mounting into a loud piercing caw. And Emily looking up, you see the ravens diving down from the rafters, swirling around uh, one of the blights. While another flock goes toward another one of the blights. So, uh, that will be a hit, a hit, and I believe that's a miss. Yes, all right, so uh, they deal a good, you watch as the swarms descend on the leftmost blight, tearing it to pieces and reducing it to shreds and bits of thorns. All right. All right, that is the end of their turn. Erthrandir, you are rooted and stuck in place. What are you doing? Okay, so the first thing he does before the roots come in is just staring open-mouthed at Amity in astonishment. Though this is kind of broken when the vines start to wrap around his legs. Oh, son of a bitch! He kind of looks to the others. Realizing they're setting ducks out here, and then up where the druid ran out of view. And has an idea that's worked for him before. He is going to cast Dissonant Whispers on that fucker. Okay. Um, he is within range. Yes. So. As, he just sh as he just shouts uh, the beginning of a, the same elvish ballad you've heard him singing. The sound mm -hmm. almost like painful. All right. All right. Uh, give me that, uh, give me that good shit. Yeah. That is a 12. That just saves. But that is 7 psychic right. damage, which means a All concentration right. 7 check. psychic damage dealt. Uh, yes. Good point. Let me double check something very quickly. Um, all right. Very good. Um, is that the end of your turn? Uh, no. Does that break concentration? 
Uh, your concentration? His. On Entangle. Ah, yes. Uh, one second, please. Yes, it does. Entangle vanishes. Nice. All right. Get out of here. We're sitting, we're sitting ducks. And he is going to use his movement. Five, ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's, is it still? Okay. 15, no, it's not difficult to rain anymore. Just confirming. 20. Slides around the barrel. 25. Realizing he can't quite make it to the door. Can he flatten himself against the barrel to be a harder target for the blights on the balcony? Um, I would say no. Uh, they, you will have, uh, yeah, no, I'm afraid not. Uh, uh, uh you could try to crawl under the barrel. There is a, a, enough space for it if you want to throw yourself prone and hide underneath. Yeah, that's probably the high percentage play here. He's going right. to go prone. All right. Very good. Uh, with that, is that the end of your turn? Uh, yes. All right. Very good. Um, with that. Kiva, you're up. All right. You've so got uh, still two hostiles in the upper floor to the top right, one at the top of the stairs. The Drew is nowhere to be seen. Uh, Metron's long gone, and Erethrinder's press underneath uh, the uh, largest vat to the right. What are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um... All right. She's going to... Uh, and there's someone right at the top of the steps here. Uh, yes, just a needle blight. It's currently being harried by one of the swarms of ravens, but that are kind of like swirling all around it in this like black whirlwind of feathers. Uh, but yes, that's the only other thing that is encountering it. Okay, and so it would be a reasonable assumption that the druids are up higher than the needle blights, but she could get to them from this area. You've like if she only went up to the balcony, druid. the druid okay. is nowhere to be seen. Okay. The um... entered the room and then stepped out. Okay, damn. All right, so maybe that's not the play. Um, fuck it. Uh, I'm going to take that back, uh, or at least, you know, go back the 10 feet. If I lose that 10 feet that I moved the first time, that's fine. She's just going to go after Metreon. All right. Wise. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think that's as far as I get. You can because dash. I double oh, yeah, fuck it. Um, yeah, so then she'll use her action to dash, and then just, yeah. So that's 30, and then, oh, how do I open this door? Oh, is that one locked? Okay. <laughs> 35. Yep. All right, she's just going to use the rest of his turn following. <laughs> All right. And I will actually, uh, in I will place Amity uh, on the uh, top level, just so you can see where everything is arranged. Thank you. All right. Uh, with that, Kiva, are you out of the room, or are you just barely unable to get out? I think I can go uh, 10 more feet, so... Yeah, you got 60 feet. You're fine. All right, very good. Uh, with that, yeah, that so is the end of the Kiva's ramp. turn. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Um, with that, Lillison, you're up. You hear all this commotion. You are still inside the barrel room. Uh, you see the ground outside covered in needles and thorns that are half embedded in the flagstones, half scattered across... Um, you see Erythrindir, like, huddled underneath a vat, um, and Kiva and Metrion are seemingly absent. Okay, uh, just remind me, are the walls of this place made of wood or stone? The walls are made primarily of stone with wood reinforcements. Okay, um, Lillison is going to... I assume that she heard things like the doors opening and stuff like that. Uh, yes, you would have been hearing everything that's going on. It's a bit much at once, but you have a general sense, especially given your passive perception of where everyone is. Okay. Uh, Lillison is going to um, uh, quietly shout, I guess, outside. Um, Get yourselves into this room. Put, put stone between you and them. I'm going upstairs after him. Um, and then she's going to go upstairs after him. Too late. They are, the others are already heading into the other hallway. Lillison's All right, Lillison up makes her yeah. way upstairs. And as you do, you can see the at the other end of the hallway, the druid, his gaze still uh, glancing through the half-open door into the other way. Uh, but as your footsteps mount up the uh, staircase, you can see him standing at the other... Uh, he sees you standing at the other end of the corridor and whips his gaze toward you. 
Okay. Um, muttering uh, somewhat, um, Lilith is just going to stomp forward, um, just saying stuff like, they told us that these people did not speak very much common, but with words like, ah, fuck. And then she is going to uh, poison, uh, yes, poison spray him. I will say you probably can't, oh no, you're bonus action dashing, aren't yes. you? Yes, I am. Okay. All right, uh, that is a constitution saving throw. That is a nine. All right, he takes uh, five poison damage and um, is poisoned. Mm -hmm. Let me double check that. Uh, no, just the five poison damage. He is not poisoned the condition. Sadly. All right, very good. And then she's going to take the rest of that bonus action dash to like back up a little bit. All right. Um, he brings in the gaths and hacks, coughing as the uh, dark, noxious gash inv invades his lungs and mouth. He wheezes toward you, gritting his teeth. You play with things that you do not understand, little girl. Whether or not I understand them, they're mine. All right, Amity, you're up. Okay, Amity is going to try to get away, uh, going uh, over to the open door, and then, oh boy, this is going to look pitiful, uh, using the dash action, <laughs> falling over, uh, collapsing onto the ground, oh. getting up, uh, walking one more square through that door, and then using the object interaction to close the door behind her, ending up right. in the shrapnel barrel room. All right, the door half the door slams shut behind you, letting you take cover, cowering behind it. Uh, one of the double doors is still open, but you are you think you're pretty well shielded from here. And I'm at one HP. Yes, love it. Right choices. All right. Uh, with that, uh, that is the end of Amity's turn. Metreon, you are in the basement. Uh, as you spill out from the uh, the ramp onto the bottom floor, you can see an ice-cold cellar, wooden pillars and beams supporting the 10-foot-high ceiling. You can see that this cellar seems to be split in two by a 5-foot-thick brick wall, and a thin mist covers the floor. You see that this half of the cellar features an 8-foot-tall wooden partition that doubles as a wine rack. This one appears to be half-filled with wine bottles. Um, does this mist look like evil mist? Uh, no, just chill mist. You know, winter mist, that sort of thing. Okay. The temperature is noticeably colder. You actually kind of shiver a bit, and you can see your breath. So I see the beginnings of a staircase at the other end of the hall. Is that a going up or going down? Uh, from this side, you can see that the staircase appears to be going up. Um, and did I hear any of the other commotion from where I'm at on the other two levels? Um, you do not currently hear any other commotion. Uh, you, um, yeah, I mean, there's no indication of anything here. That You can see a few bottles haphazardly lying across the floor, one of which is broken. Okay. Uh, well, without hearing any other commotion, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my movement first. Um, as a free action, can I take one of the full bottle, uh, full bottles of wine? As an object interaction, yes, you may. Thank you. Yes. I'll put it in my bag. And then, um, I saw a door on the other side, but, uh, I don't quite trust it yet. Uh, hmm. I am going to go ahead and keep going through the basement. So I'm going to use my action to move. Um, and I don't see anything on this side, so I'm going to use my bonus action to go ahead and move up to the door. Um, okay. and I guess that's it. I, I have some movement left. I, I don't know if I'd be able to transfer that into a perception check to see if I can hear anything behind the door. Um, if you haven't used your action, you may. No, I use my action to move, so... Yeah, it's, it's, again, it's yeah. fine. I, yeah, it's fine. 
All right, very good. Uh, is that your turn? Uh, yes. All right. With that, the needle blights, Arthur you can't see them, but you can hear the needle blights turning and beginning marching away. Uh, one of them turns, and you hear the spray of needles and several squawks and caws of pain, presumably from the ravens. Okay. Meanwhile, Kiva, you were heading downstairs, correct? Uh, Down the ramp? That's where your current location is? Yeah, she's hesitating, though, because she's wondering if she should go back. All right, well, your decision is made, because as you glance back, you see <laughs> flooding into the space behind you a needle blight, a silhouette behind it, uh, the sound of steps creaking down the old ramp. It turns to face you, its dead, hollow eyes meeting yours. It slowly raises its hands, uh, but that is its action for its turn. It had to dash to get there. Ooh, so, okay. That is the end of the round for that needle blight, which means next up, it's our good buddy's turn. Oh, I love him. All right. He meets Lillison's eyes for a moment. Um, let's see. All right. He is going to raise his uh, staff, stepping forward uh, another five feet, pushing it toward her, and then letting loose a thunderous blast of force. I will need a constitution saving throw from Lillison. Come on. Six. Fuck. God damn it. That will be 17 points of force damage. Lillison is on the ground. Uh, have an odd question for you. Go for it. If, can Arthur and your see this? Uh, no. This is in the Fuck. upstairs corridor. You hear this, but you do not see it. Okay, never mind. All right. Lillison, the last thing you see before fading into unconsciousness is the druid peering over you and shaking his head for turning and stepping over your unconscious body. And that is the end of his turn. Next up, the ravens will take their turn, moving and attacking this blight. Um, just for ease of use, let's just see how they do. It's a hit, hit. Yeah, this blight is down. All right, uh, that is the end of the Raven's turns. Erthrandir, you're up. You are prone underneath the vat. Okay. Um, he so, by yourself, as far as you can tell. All right. He presumably heard the thunderous fucking blast from up from the upper gallery, though, right? Yes, very loudly. Okay. Erthrandir is going to scramble to his feet and see what he can see. All right, scrambling to your feet and looking around, you can see the ravens on the second floor uh, pecking around a fallen mound of what looks like vines and thorns and needles that might have once formed a shape but are now reduced to nothing. You can see around the corner of one of the closed door to the barrel room, uh, Amity, uh, mostly shielded from sight. And as you glance behind you, you can see Kiva in the ramp, now cornered by two needle blights that are approaching her. No sign of Lillison. No sign of Lillison. Okay. Okay. He's going to step out to see the situation better. Can he see the druid on the top floor? No. The, this druid is nowhere to be seen. Where did he hear the thunder coming from? The upper floor, somewhere to the north. You, it was oh, probably, from how you pronounce it, probably somewhere from one of the corridors or rooms on the second floor. All right. He's going to step in. A Amity, did you see anybody? Oh my god. He As he kind of takes in how badly she's been hit. 
Yami shakes her head. There's no one in here, as far as I can tell. All right. I, I'm out of healing. I'm sorry. I'm going to stay safe, all right? And he will wrap her in a brief, tight hug before rushing upstairs. All right. You too. She returns the hug. All right. All right, you step upstairs and see Kiva's unconscious body on the ground. And you see a flicker of movement Lillison. in the room beside you. Or sorry, Lillison's, not Kiva's. He swears very loudly. Uh, did he need to, how, did he need to dash to get up here or no? Uh, it was around a 20 foot climb. So I would say it's. Okay, so yes. Yeah, especially Since given that you just stood up from prone, yeah. Okay, so that at 20 feet plus the 20 there, I've got... Uh, okay. That's his turn. All right. Oh, oh shit, does he see the druid as he passes by? Yes, you see him as you pass by. You piece his eyes of widen shit. Toward you. He just bares his teeth back. It is a mistake to meddle in affairs greater than your own. Funny, because I could say the same. Is Arthur still holding the staff? Uh, yeah, he's got it in his pack. Oh, but it's not, is it visible? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, he can't really, like, sh it's like six feet long, right? He can't really shove that in his backpack. Fair. As you, as you watch, the druid's eyes shift up to the staff poking out of your uh, pack on the, on the back, and that was a lot of rhymes. Um, <laughs> his eyes narrow. Yes. I think you will give back what you have taken. And as you watch the mineral on the edge of his staff begins to glow a dim flickering green light. Alrighty. That's my turn. Alright, Kiva, you are about to be cornered by two approaching needle blights. Uh, you are on the down ramp. Uh, Erthrandir and Amity and Lillison are nowhere to be seen. You can hear Metreon, you think, moving down below. What y'all doing? Oh my goodness. Well, she's fucking panicking. So she is going to rage again. My poor girl. Um, and then, oh, I have to do some rolling now. Are you attacking? Are you running away? What are you doing? She's going to attack once they've cornered her. Like, that's it, just triggers her thing. Yep, I mean, you're not cornered. Left. You could keep running downstairs if you wanted. Oh, okay. I thought you said I was cornered. Yeah, no. I thought I was both no. sides cornered. Like, there was one between. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Would one get yeah. an attack, attack of opportunity, though? No, they are not actually adjacent to you yet. Gotcha, gotcha. They had to move all their movement just to get within 10 feet. Oh, okay, then, yeah, fuck it. She's not going to rage. She's just going to go all the way down the balcony, uh, or all the way down the um, steps to Metreon. All right, it's around a 15-foot uh, descent, and you can see Metreon uh, now with a wine bottle under one arm, standing cautiously by a southern door. Metreon, you hear Kiva and turn to face her. So, uh, um, oh, God. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I instinctively uh, point my wine bottle uh, at her face, kind of like almost like it's a saber or something like that, just out of instinct. And then once I see it's her, I put it in my bag. So Kiva's going to um, <laughs> cross over, take a wine bottle for herself, shove it in her bag. And then um, that's, I think, the yeah, uh, this would be the last of her movement. And she's just going to tell him to keep going. Just, we gotta keep running. Okay. All right, is she dashing here? Or is she, what's she doing with her action? Uh, I thought it was an action to take the bottle, so. No, it is not. Nope. Oh, fuck yeah, then she's dashing. <laughs> yeah, damn it, she'd take a All bottle right. and she's running. Well, you see me is in front of the door going, too, so. Is she going through the door? Is she going to the other side of the cellar? Where is she going? She's gonna go through that door. All right, uh, if you wanna open it, you can see beyond. And you're heading inside? Yeah. All right. You can see thick moss covering the walls of this underground staircase. And at the foot of the steps is a landing. And as you pass through the arched wooden door set into the wall, you can see littering the wooden steps, small pine-like needles covering the surface, thorns driven into the wood in several places, muddy clawed footprints that pass through the door through, where, through whence you came. So... You can see the staircase leads up to a higher level, and you can see a faint, thin, gray light seeping in from whatever chamber this leads to. Uh, okay, fuck it. She's going to use the rest of her movement to 
uh, go up there. All right. You make the rest of your way up there. And the room you pass into now, there's a dirty window in the south wall that lets dim light to enter this room. You can clearly see that wine bottles seem to be manufactured here as evidenced by the tools lying about the wooden rack full of freshly blown glass bottles along the south wall, the hearth built into the southwest corner, and the barrel of sand standing next to it. Behind you, you can see the staircase descending underground. You can faintly see Metron's, Metron's silhouette at the base. And between the staircase and the rack of bottles, you can see a barred door to your left. To your right, another door closed, leading north. Okay, um... This seems like a safe place to be for right now. So she's going to stay here and just call for Metreon to follow. And shut the door behind him. Alright. Very good. So, uh, with that, that is Kiva's turn. Lillison, give me a death save, please. If you don't mind throwing one down. What if I do mind? <laughs> uh, I don't care. Do it anyway. <laughs> that is a nine. All right, that's oh, round no. one failure. Amity, you're up. All right, Amity was hoping to save this one for the druid, but might not get that chance. So she can see these two needle blights uh, or, or here in the bottom right, yes? Faintly, they don't seem to have any interest in you or to have noticed you, but you can just faintly see them. They appear to be making their way downward. Okay, uh, she's going to go for the pun then. Uh, pointing at them and saying, <clears throat> if you can't catch up with Kiva, don't start whining about sour grapes. Oh, 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 oh. I love it. I love it so much. All right. Fantastic. That's a vicious mockery against the closest one. Or... Oh, oops. I made the wisdom save. Yeah, yeah, they have to make a wisdom save against uh, the closest one. All right. That is an 18. I'm afraid. Right. Well, it doesn't do anything, but no matter. Uh, Amity's pleased with herself as she goes to the stairs, and how much movement to go up the stairs? Uh, I know I said 20 earlier, but I don't think that's quite right. I think 15 is reasonable, so. Okay, then Amity I think almost you can just makes it make to, it the, to top. the top. Sure. Yep. You can just Cresting faintly see, like, Erythrindir around the corner. And you can just faintly see Lillicent's unconscious body, and beside Erythrindir, you can see the silhouette of a druid in the doorway. Oh, dear. Maybe I should have saved that. And just End as you make turn. your way up, you could have seen one of the needle blights turning toward you. End of turn. <laughs> no, no more turn. Metreon, you're up. Uh, yeah. Keep us at the top of the stairs. What you doing? Uh, I'm going to follow her because she's beefy and uh, will protect me if something happens. All right. Like a so crunch that's... wrap supreme. You make your way up to the upper level, joining Kiva in the room with the uh, glass bottles and the two doors. Do we stay in here? Do we get out? Look, if you want to stay in here and, and just keep keep yourself safe, I, I totally understand. Uh, but I think there's one more druid, and uh, or at least one more druid up here. And so, you know, we should try to finish it. Fuck. Good question. Uh, did Metreon close the door on his way up? He did not. All right. Ah! I forgot. Oh. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. I respect it. Uh. uh fuck. Um. Poop. Um. Hearing Kiva say this about the druid and realizing that the only way they have out is to get these last two druids taken care of. Metreon will at least open the door a crack and just kind of take a peek. Which door are you looking through? The northern one? Yeah, the one I'm clicking on, but I can't see through. Uh, yes, because as you try to push through it, you feel a weight on the other side. And you slowly realize to your horror that this is one of the doors that you blocked with the barrels. Oh, no! <laughs> You're safe. Oh, You're completely my. safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would come well, back Well, Metreon and Kiva's last stand is not at the Four Seasons Total Landscaping. It is in the wine bottle room. 
you yeah. know what? We're, I think I think I think we did it good. Um, so, uh, <sighs> fudgicles. Um, real well, realizing that's the the room that we were just in, but also uh, presumably don't want to be in. Um, actually, no, because there that's the only door. Uh, there right? are two doors. One of them appears to have the barrels on the other side. The other one is barred and seems to lead outside. Oh, okay. Um, good to know for right now. Probably won't open it because of uh, twigs of lights running around. Uh, he's going to use his action to push through in this right. kind of like hysterical uh, adrenaline field rage. All right, I will need a strength check from you. I'm amazing and, at those. Oh, I was going to say, probably keep it. Uh, unfortunately, not. You would need to take the health action on your turn. 11. Unfortunately, you struggle grunting, pushing against it, but it's just a bit too heavy. These barrels are pretty big. Ah, <sighs> fuck. Uh, and then realizing that uh, he had not closed the door, uh, he's going to rush back down and close the door using All his right. bonus action dash. All right, are you... Okay. Um... Yeah, bonus action dash. 30 minutes, 30 feet. All right, very good. Um... Are you trying to close it quietly? Are you slamming it shut? I'm just slamming it shut. Actually, yeah. Okay. The it slams shut, and I do you have enough movement to finish up there, or no? I would probably have. Are to, you still downstairs? Uh, well, hold on. Let me check. Uh, no, it's like twenty feet down. Uh, I'd be able to get back up on the stairs, but I wouldn't be able to get all the way up. All right, I'll put you around halfway. Does that seem yeah. fine? Yeah, that's fine. All right. I'm loving this mental image of Metreon just taking these six seconds, like dashing all over the place, shoving his shoulder <laughs> against the door. He's got <laughs> incredible Sonic the Hedgehog vibes. It's great. It's, he, he's got to go. He's got to go fast. He's got to yeah. go fast. All right. Uh, with that, Metreon, you hear the steady marching of clawed, inhuman feet slowly coming down the stairs. Down the stairs? You mean the ramp? Or not the stairs, down the ramp to the okay. uh, east. And you wait with bated breath for a moment, your breath frosting as it wisps out from your lips, waiting to see if it'll come through the door. And then you slowly hear the feet pass by, the footsteps fading off to your left. Metron's heart, just... they don't seem to enter. Metron's stomach just falls and he kind of stumbles backwards and almost takes a seat down on the uh, the steps for a moment. Benefits of enemies with four intelligence. Yes. All right. With that, Erthrandir, the druid before you raises his staff and with a single tone grunt, smoothly and efficiently whirls it through the air toward you as he strikes you with his quarter staff. Oh, thank God. No one's got infinite spell slots in this world. Oh, thank God. So, this is going to be... Especially not me. Go. I am out. I have infinite spell slots. All right. <laughs> Do you now? So. Very good, and let's see if that hits. That is a 16 to hit. Erthrandir is going to cutting words that. All right. It still hits. Fuck. All right. It slides, slices through the air. The gem at the end glimmering a, a deep viridian glow that soon surrounds the entirety of the staff and uncoats the man's hands as he chants another word swir swirling through the air, dealing five points of bludgeoning damage to you. I am going to pay that back in kind, you piece of shit. I mean, he just meets your eyes and shakes his head grimly. Uh, that is the end of his turn. The ravens have nothing to attack. Erthrandir, you're okay. Up. He's going to he's going to give a look to Amity and kind of jerk his head at Lillison. She's hurt. Can you? I think she's dying. I'll, I'll, I'll get. It. I'll Thank you. Thank you. And with that, he's going to attempt to introduce this druid to the virtues of a short sword to the teeth. Go for it. That is a 17 to hit and six piercing damage. 
Uh, all right. 17 will hit. Six piercing damage will also hit. All right. Slicing through him, he grunts, spilling back, blood spurting from a wound on the, top, on the side of his shoulder. He grunts and kind of like places a hand over it, shaking his head, but staggers up again to his feet. So he's looking a bit winded. All righty. That's his turn. All right. Kiva, you and... You see Metron kind of staggering up the steps, not quite all the way up. He seems to relax abruptly as you hear footsteps fading in the cellar below. What are you doing? All right. So, um, hmm. I think she wants to try to bust through that door. And I think the only way she's going to be able to do it is if she rages first. So that's what she's going to do. She's going to actually, for once, channel it and just tap into that fucking panic and anger uh, on purpose and uh, and try to bust through that door. All right. You pull into yourself, feeling around at your core for that pillar, that deep well of rage and pain and fear that you've known has always dwelt there, but that you've been so terrified to confront and as you meet it, you feel yourself opening up to it, just a sliver, and a little thread that flows through. You're almost terrified for a moment of the blind fury and rage, the terror that'll wash over your mind. But instead, as you let it into yourself, you hear only a song, a beautiful woman's voice singing in an elegant elven language. It fills you with a beautiful, trilling sensation you feel tears rolling down your cheeks. And you feel the anger taking a place in you. It's not ugly. It's not awful. It burns white hot with a righteous fury. And you realize now that it's not a monster. It's you. And it's choosing your fight. You rage. Roll on your uh, surge table, please. Hold on, I just need a second. <laughs> oh, that yeah. was great. Yeah, 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 same. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Who's crying? <laughs> Kiva. That's a, that's a seven. So, um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm like really, that was so stunning. Um, so, Thorny Tendrils, after oh. hearing that beautiful song and crying, burst forth from the ground and surround her, um, turning 10 feet around her um, into difficult terrain. And that goes with her as she moves. All right, you watch the tendrils themselves aren't the black gnarled roots of the Vine Blight's creation, but Metron, as you glance upward, you see sprouting from the ground where Kiva walks a lush bed of grass and vines, thick and a deep green, mixing with lemon yellows and bright, healthy life. Some of them sprouting small flowers of periwinkle and violets and deep scarlet reds. And as she takes a breath and anchors her shoulder against the door. A shiver, almost like a breath of life, ruffles through the lush patch below her. Uh, and she's going to use her action to um, try to bust through the door like that. All right. Uh, give me a, uh, I guess, a strength check with advantage, given that you're raging. Nice. Natural 20. <laughs> All right. And for a total of? 21. All right. Coming together, pulling all of that righteous fury, this defiance, and as the elven woman's song that seems so familiar to you, the voice so much like your own, but older, more distant, mournful, but proud and defiant, welling up in you, you don't realize that your eyes are shimmering with bright blue tears falling down your face until you burst through the door, slamming it, the wood crunching and splintering beneath your weight as the barrels beyond go scattering, flying in all directions. Your chest heaving, you peer out into the room beyond. Uh, she's gonna give a look back at Metreon and just look like tearful and bewildered and 
and so incredibly confused, but like driven, and she's just gonna keep going the others uh, with the rest of her movement. All right, and as you step forward, Metron, you watch as the lush carpet of greenery shimmers, shivers, and then follows through after her. The patch of life following each step she takes. And in that one moment where she meets your eyes, Metreon, and a shiver runs down your spine, it's something unearthly behind those eyes. Something beautiful and terrible as her eyes glow with a brilliant viridian light. The scar is bleeding, not black, but gold. And then Kiva's gone out the door. Work, yeah. All right, Kiva, anything else you're doing on your turn? Uh, no, Serena's just going to spend the rest of this time crying, though, if that's okay with everyone else. All right. Is there anywhere else you'd like to move in here, or are you waiting for Metreon? Um, she's going to go as as far as she can to the ramp. All right. I'd say you can probably move... Like there? You know? Yeah. I'd say it's not even difficult to rain because all the barrels have been moved. Oh, but perfect. That's as far awesome. As we can go. Thank all you. All right. Beautiful. That is the end of your turn. Lillison, slam one of those death saves, please. Uh, crying no is a free action, right? right? Dying is always a free action. No, I said crying. Oh, crying, yes. That's yeah, it. crying That's <laughs> Crying it. is a free action. <laughs> 13. Nice. <laughs> one and one. There one and go. one. There we go. All right, Amity, you're up. Uh, and... Aaron Deere is beside you. Lillison's prone on the floor, and there's an angry man with a stick in the doorway to your right. Oh, what are I'm you well doing? aware. Can I? <laughs> is it possible to nudge past Aaron Deere to his south and not take an AOO as I walk by? Or yes, you wouldn't technically be leaving the druid's uh, zone. So fun, yes, fun, you fun. Not take an AOO. Okay, then in that case, I nudge past Aaron Deere and uh, wipe a tear from my eye onto a scaled hand that I then press onto Lillison, and she regains... Uh, it should have done a Cure Wounds. Hold up, I'm going to do this correctly. Yeah. Well, this should be casting Cure Wounds right now. I'm probably just doing it wrong. Uh, <laughs> okay. Move some windows around and see if there's a, a hidden little, like, what level do you want to cast this at? Box hidden under Yeah, that everything. happens a lot. <laughs> Sometimes pops up in the main right. screen. It, it, it's cool. What what is the uh, amount on cure wounds? It's like one uh, plus something. D eight plus D eight plus your casting mod, so three. Okay, you regain four hit points, so you're back up to full. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow, Emily was the first today. Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. And that's all my movement. So that's my turn. All right, Lillison is not quite back on her feet, but close enough. Uh, Metreon, you are up. What you doing? Am I up, though? Um, feeling pretty down right now. Uh, but seeing uh, Kiva go all Galadriel or whatever, uh, he's going to very <laughs> cautiously uh, follow her up the steps. All right. All right, so that's uh, five feet of movement to get up there, I guess, or ten. I don't know, math. Uh, yes. Yeah, so take a step up, and I'll just move you to the top. Okay, so he's gonna finish his movement. Let me out. All right, it's not letting <laughs> me out. Please let me out. All right, let me uh, open the door for you. There you go. Thank you. Uh, so I think that was 15, right? Uh, yes, that would be 15 feet of movement. Okay. He's got another 15. Uh, and then these stairs in the center go down, not up, right? Uh, the stairs that you're facing, they go yes. up. Yes, gotcha. That's what they I go thought. up to the balcony. That's what I thought. Um, Kiva, what, did it look like Kiva was heading up those, or was she going somewhere else? Uh, you can hear her footsteps uh, echoing to the right side of the chamber. So, like, closer you to the ramp? You can actually see a, faint, a very faint trail of growing and then withering away uh, lush green plants off to the right. I uh, got you. Okay. Um, and so that's 20 feet. Uh, I'm just going to follow her then. 
and uh, I'll yell at her, where are we going? Uh, and then I guess, since it looks like she's, I guess, going back up the ramp. Um, <coughs> no. Um, fuck. I'm just going to use my uh, my bonus action to dash then. Yeah, she's, she's trying to head back up to where she thinks the others are. All right, very good. And then, uh, remembering that there's a staircase going up, he's going to go up there. All right, you are now up there. And then seeing everybody just all up in the line. Uh, he is going to panic. Uh, but he's going to hold his action. Uh, if the druid, which he can kind of see from here. I don't know if that would give, like, if just he has, like, bit. half cover or if he just had. He would have uh, three three quarters cover from here. The door's pretty narrow and the staircase kind of comes around in the on the sides. You know what I'm going to do? is I'm going to rush up and then in, the, in this exasperated way, seeing the druid just kind of there, uh, I slam my hand against the wall. Fuck off and die. And I'm going to go ahead and cast Toll the Dead. <gasps> Ooh. Oh my goodness. Nice. Uh, so it's a DC 13 wisdom save. DC 13. Mm. Unfortunately, he rolls a 14. Well, he gets like, nothing then. Stumbles for a second, clutching his hands to his head, and then you see the gem on his staff go a little bit t brighter, the green energy bursting from it. Then his head snaps back into position, his eyes glowering toward you. Uh, and yeah, he's uh, Metreon kind of freezes for a moment, feeling this strange electricity that's sort of flowing through him that he's never felt before, and he's going to stay there. All right, the druid meets your eyes, Metreon. Lip curling back. I do not like the stench of your magic. All right. Uh, with that, uh, Kiva, just in time, you hear, as you're making your way toward the doors, you hear uh, a pounding coming from the left side of the chamber. Let me make a quick roll here. All right, you watch as you hear the doors slam open and you can just briefly see uh, the two needle blights emerging from the opposite side of the chamber. Um, you can see there's shadows faintly through the uh, through this lower part of the area before they move out of sight on the opposite side. All right. Uh, holy shit, that's going to fuck with her a little bit. Um... The boys are back in town. That is their turn. <laughs> they have to <death. laughs> The boys. <laughs> All right, uh, at this point, it's the druid's turn. Eyes wide and crazed, gritting his teeth and glancing from Metron to Erythrindir to Amity, then raising his staff high. Fools. He just shakes his head and extends his staff toward you, and it begins to gro glow and throb with a deep green light that a lot of you are now quite familiar with. I wish I weren't. And there's a moment of pause. And then it unleashes a thunderous blast of force toward the three of you. Nope, Can't, don't like that. Can't save. Now I believe, just checking, he's only he's only cast a, a thunder wave once so far, I believe. So far, yes. Uh, yeah, All thunder right. wave, possibly a bark skin. No, and an entangle. Very good. All right. So this is con then, save? This is going to be a con save from each of you. Can I have advantage Eleven. because I finally found one? No. Eight. Ooh, 19. And Amity? 11. All right. Very good. So uh, with that... Um, Amity and Erythrindir fail, Metreon succeeds. So, Amity and Erythrindir, you each take 12 points of force damage and are pushed back against the walls, taking an additional 2d6 damage. Oh. Do I, like, scoot down the hall to the left, or...? 
Uh, no, this is from the direction of the druid. That's in another five points of force damage to each of you. So, 17 total. Correct. Very down. Oh my god, is Amity down? Oh my down, god. but not dead. Metreon okay. takes six points of force damage. And is not pushed. I presume you mean thunder, right? Sorry, yes, thunder damage, not force. Apologies. Gotcha. Uh, Kiva, you can hear a thunder, uh, the sound of echoing, booming thunder from the upper floor. Uh, that's not good. I don't like that at all. All right. Uh, with that, that is the end of the druid's turn. Um, the raven's turns, they will quite happily dive bomb these two needle blades. All right, so just giving some rolls for them. That is a hit, a miss, a miss, and a miss. Not great. All right, that is the end of the Raven's turns. Erythrindir, give me a death save. If I must, and I must. Oh, come on. Oh. <gasps> Oh, three. Sub off them all. All right. One failed save. Kiva, That's... you're up. Wait, is that not... Oh, oh, sorry. I saw the red and I assumed everything was very yes, bad. Yeah, yeah I thought, I that thought too so too. Time. That's why I freaked out. It's just foundry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Jesus Christ. Um, Kiva's going to go up that staircase. Uh, That's 15 feet of movement to get to it, right? Uh, Getting to the staircase? The one in the center of the room? Is that where you're going? She Isn't there a staircase or that goes... the ramp? Yeah, the, up towards where the others All are. Right. You can take the ramp. Uh, it's right through the doors to your right. Okay, how many feet is it up to get up the ramp? Um, Not far. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six to get to the top and a little bit more. Just four to get to the top. Okay, so she's going to take, she's definitely going to go up at least as far as she can see and use the rest of her movement to get as close as possible to the druid and just start trying to fucking right. kill him. Uh, you are on the second floor now, if you'd like to check that out. Uh, you have an additional 10 feet of movement left before your action. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess Erythrindir isn't occupying his space anymore, so you can probably take that. She's well, not I can't, I, yeah, I can't see so any of I, you. I misunderstood. My apologies. So you can, you get the sense that ahead into the left is where the thunder was heard. Uh, you still have your action. What are you doing? Um. Okay, fuck it. She's gonna take the dash action and just get to where everyone else is. Um, where where is everyone? <laughs> uh. You think they're probably through one of these doors. Uh, this okay. door to your immediate left is the one with the, with the uh, rooms beyond. Okay, she's going to go that way. All right, if you'd like to open that door and peek beyond. Just a little hallway. So she's going to just go down this hallway. And you can now see the druid through the door. Oh, Locked in combat. Amazing. You can and see the quarterstaff whirling and crashing. Um, you hear the s sound. You Yeah. And, you know, he do seem kind of standing there, glowering in the space. Okay, um, so she's going to stay there, and then next turn, she's going to kick some ass. That's it. All right, beautiful. Uh, Lillison, uh, two of your compatriots are unconscious. Metreon's coming up the stairs. There's a druid in the room, and you hear footsteps approaching from the eastern side. What you doing? Okay, Lillison is still on the ground. She's going to look at Metreon, and she is going to say, Get the staff out of his hands if you can. Um, and then she, does she, okay. If she starts dragging Amity away, does he get an AOO, AOO on Amity's body? No, forced movement is not uh, AOO. Okay, uh, she is going to do that without uh, standing up. All right, Amity or Erythrindir? Amity. Gotcha. All right, uh, you can do that. Uh, it, I will say that, you know, it won't be a grapple or anything, but since you are prone, you'll be moving uh, at half your movement speed. She stood up. Oh, no, she did? I did not. She, oh, never yeah, mind. She, Sorry. She's crawling yeah. here. But, uh, yeah, so... Staying low. Um, I'm actually going to 
bring Amity into this little bedroom that's right here and uh, probably use my action to like put her on the bed. All right. Uh, she is now on the bed. Okay. Uh, then gonna. I would say that hang you out. honestly probably don't really need your. No, since you use your action, your object interaction to grasp her, I would say yeah, you need your full action to push her up. Okay. Uh, just gonna hang out here, uh, listening very anxiously, to see if uh, she's gonna get a chance to get Earth Ranger two before the next bad thing happens, and that's her turn. All right. Very good. I have uh, a rather grim question to ask. Go for it. Um, Truffle was in Amity's bag, right? Uh, yes. It's protected by the bag. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. The, the rules are that animals are immortal as long as they're not actually useful. Don't worry. Okay. Accurate. Okay, good. Thank you can hear you. Truffle like, well, listen, as you glance toward the bed, you can see Truffle like anxiously poking his head out of the bed and then giving a little distressed squeal and like nuzzling Amity's side and then curling up against her before giving you a mournful look. Do I have the opportunity to like open up the bag a little bit more so he can come out if he wants to? He seems to be able to nuzzle his own way out. You get the sense that he's escaped without Amity's knowledge quite a number of times. Aha! <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> All right. Yeah, that's my turn. All right, uh, Amity, uh, save that death. Yeah. I'm thinking 13, maybe 16. It'd be a natural 20, who knows? <laughs> it was not a 13 oh. or a 16. Maybe more like a five. All right, is that one failure so far? It's like one failure. All right. Of dread. Metrion, you hear footsteps coming from the opposite side of the wall behind you. Erythrinder's unconscious body, Lillison just crawling, dragged Amity out of sight. And there's a druid in the next room. What are you doing? Wow, what am I doing? Um, so if I, if I race down the hall, will the druid have me... Will, will the druid be able to, to attack me because of opportunity attacks, or am I not like, yes. necessarily? Okay. Again, because he's around a corner from a door, you probably have reasonably good cover, but uh, he will get an AOO. He can still get me. Got you. Okay. His range. Yeah. Um, well, just kind of seeing red and knowing that destroying these these this, these cultists, these druids, is probably probably the only way out. He is going to go ahead and take out his dagger, and he's going to rush up and try and stab him in the throat. All right. Roll it. Fuck him up. <laughs> hey, nice. Roll that damage. Tap, tap, tap. And do I get sneak attack because my ally's within five feet, even though he's unconscious? Uh, I'm pretty okay. sure you get it because get of a sneak crit. Attack Let me double red. check. Let's see. Uh, once per turn, you can deal yada yada. Uh... Okay, no, you do not have an advantage, so you do not sneak attack. But it's just a normal crit. Okay. So that's nine points of piercing damage. Uh, all right, nine points. Uh, how do you want to do this? <gasps> yes! Seeing, seeing Aerithrin Deer's body and seeing Lilithan uh, drag Amity away and just racing, uh, blood pumping, adrenaline surging. He just sees this uh, druid in front of him, um, just gloating and, and smiling with his gnash, gnashed, gnarly teeth. He takes out his dagger and then just kind of rushes into him, just multiple, uh, just stabbing him in the throat multiple times, just like rapidly. All right. He watches the man coughs, choking, clutching toward his ruined throat and then rasping out before falling and i'd like to say he, oh yes. i was gonna say he's just gonna keep stabbing until he falls to the ground unconscious all right like he, he's, he's taking every ounce of frustration and rage and aggression that he has had the past right. week and putting it out the, of him the first two strokes go in slicing across the sides of the neck and causing his head to loll limply like a cut marionette and then he a head comes up and grasps yours for a moment a terrifying burst of unnatural strength the druid's lopsided head catches your eyes, and he spurts, gurgling. Do you really think we will be the last? The time of the feathered ones has come to an end. Winter Splinter comes. And then he collapses as you continue stabbing and stabbing 
you don't realize it until the tears are splashing down your cheeks that you're crying. And that's oh my God, Kiva's, Kiva's crying tears of joy. She's so proud. I yank the dagger out of his throat and uh, throw myself back and stumble back into the hall. And then remembering uh, seeing Amity being taken to the other room, I'm going to use the rest of my movement to go into that room. Um, and yeah, pick up and we'll actually, I will interrupt you there as we will pick this up next time. Oh, <gasps> Ooh. I, really? Mid yes. death saves. First thing, first thing is on that uh, list for Kiva is loot that body. <laughs> Session break uh, obviously resets death save counts. So. Yeah, yeah, it's a long rest basically. Oh, yeah, so. basically, it's a long rest. Yeah, so and we level up in that break anyway, so yeah, it's no, fine. Great. The totally longest rest. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, don't do this to me. Do we level up? <laughs> I mean, welcome we to level four, kids. Wait, really? Oh, really? What? Yeah. Where? Yeah. <gasps> oh my Ow. goodness! All right, I will get long this resting. If I live. I mean, to be fair, Kiva and Metreon, you know, earned their level up. <laughs> hey, everybody learned uh, earned our level up. Oh no, yeah, for yeah, sure. Some, yeah, I mean, you know, some people died a little bit, and some people killed a little bit. So it's it all works out. Yeah. I'm Basically, what up. I'm saying is. <laughs> Wait, I'm so saying we should all be all level eight. So wait, if we're leveling up now, does that mean Erythindir and uh, no. Amity no. are cool? <laughs> it did mean that on the balcony. It doesn't mean that here. Got it. Okay, but here's my suggestion. If we get four level ups, does that mean that they're okay? Like if we level <laughs> up four times... <laughs> I mean, if you're able to line up, like, I'll, I'll tell you what, if, like, all, all of all of your uh, items are in the same place and you just kind of scoop them up, like Mario picking up one-ups from the same, like, glitched, you know, pipe or whatever, like, sure, by all means. Okay, then, yeah, it's valid. It's a valid solution, guys. We're fine. I think there you good. go. <laughs> all right. What Man. If, what happens if one of yes. us gets all the, the Terraka items and just, like, hides them in, in one place and lets everybody else, like, rediscover them? Does that work? <laughs> Hide and seek is not a legally recognized mode of uh, uh, character leveling, nor are scavenger hunts. Sorry, darn it! Oh, good try. Though. Can we just have a can we just have okay. a nice peaceful scavenger hunt, like for Easter? I mean, you can. Day? It's you know, no more Strahd. No more Strahd. I prefer green Easter grass to like gray Barovia grass. Personally. Barovia grass. Yeah, same. <laughs> on that note i think huh, man thank you i guess uh that's about it for this week so thank, thank you to everyone so for, for joining us today agreed um we will see all of you back in the mists next saturday um i will quickly note that we will have a few blips in the schedule coming up due to holidays we will try to keep you updated we should have more news of that next week uh but until next week uh heed the raven's words and take care